over 500 days since the Islanders last played here. It is good to be home. A sellout is expected for game one at home of this new season. The players are ready. The jerseys have been hung, and we're here to get you ready with the pregame straight ahead. Hi there and welcome to Geico Islanders game night. I'm Deb Kaufman and welcome back to the Coliseum after a long year off for everybody. The home opener has finally arrived. And for the players who opened on the road in Buffalo, this is their first chance to play at home. And for them, it was a long time coming. It feels good. Uh, it seems like it's been a long time since I uh, walked down the hall to the locker room, but uh, you know we just got to go out and um, you know not uh, not try and get too wound up or too nervous. But uh, you know I, I know the guys are really uh, re really ready to go. A lot of emotions. Uh, crowd's been obviously very enthusiastic, uh, but I think as a player, I think you get nervous. Uh, you know, it's obviously the first game of the season or one of the f first games of the season, and uh, you know, you just want to start off with a bang. And uh, you know, tonight's no different. Obviously, the whole team will be jacked up in the locker room, and uh, you know, we've had such great fans in the past. Uh, you know, with the 20-month layoff, I think they'll still come out and support us, and 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 hopefully, you know, watch watch us win a lot this year. How do you think the fans uh, will be tonight? I think hockey fans in general are probably the most loyal of any sports and uh, I mean I think they'll be great. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's going to be close to sold out and should be loud. All 30 teams opened the new look NHL on Wednesday night and really across the board we saw up-tempo games, a lot of scoring chances, exciting hockey and the Islanders and Sabres was no exception as we take a look back at our Geico highlights in game one of the new season October 5th at the HSBC Arena and hockey is back. Rick DiPietro led the team out. In the first period, the Islanders were down 1-0 when Trent Hunter took the shot, and Chris Campoli was there for the rebound, his first NHL goal to tie it at 1. We move to the third period. Buffalo led by 1. Thomas Vanek on the rush, finding Maxima Finnick in off, and how impressive was Vanek. It was a 4-2 Sabres lead. But every time the Sabres got a goal, it seemed like the Islanders would get one back. And how about this? Alexi Zitnik just floated one in and took a right-hand turn on Ryan Miller. It was 4-3. But shortly thereafter, off the faceoff, Daniel Briere bounces the puck off Brent Sokol, and the two-goal cushion was back. The Islanders on a power play again, and they get one back, and it's Jason Blake firing from the point. He gets it through. It was a one-goal game. But at 5-4, with time running out, the Islanders had to pull their goaltender, and when they couldn't keep it in, Maxima Finnegan off had an empty net. So that sealed it. It's a 6-4 win for Buffalo. And that's how it ends on Wednesday. Now, there were 19 penalties. Buffalo was only 2 of 12 on the power play, so conceivably it could have been worse. But they logged nearly twice as much time on the power play as the Islanders did. So less time for the Isles to be in the offensive zone. And what did Buffalo do that the Islanders didn't? I thought they did a better job of pushing the pace. And I thought they did a much better job. And I think that was the difference in the game of letting the puck do the work. We tried to carry the puck where they tried, they moved it and then caught up with it and used their speed that way. And that was, uh, our skilled guys uh, tried to do too much by themselves. I think we've really been outplayed in front of our net, you know, so a lot of goals been at uh, uh, rebounds so or like some stuff like uh, play. So we have to really tight more uh, like defensively, you know, and uh, do better job to clear the zone. And, you know, and it seems like uh, We've been all uh, struggling with uh, supportive puck, you know, like one guy skating, so uh, we couldn't get this kind of flow going. It was, like you said, the roller coaster up and down, and you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of times we we came back. You know, it looked like they already had the game, but we came, we battled and came back. But uh, it, it seems like they always had a, had an answer for that. What a night it was for Chris Campoli. Making his NHL debut, the native of Ontario had a party of 50 friends and relatives at the game, and in 6 minutes and 40 seconds into the first period, he scored his first NHL goal on his first NHL shot. I guess losing the game makes it a negative one, because um, that's you know the main idea. Uh, but to get my first goal was nice, to get it out of the way, and um, you know, Hopefully we can just keep building in a positive direction. I think uh, we did a lot of good things towards the end of the game and um, you know, kind of too little, too late, but um, take that as a positive into Saturday and hopefully uh, win the home opener. As 
well as Ricky played in goal. One inauspicious sequence from the game was this, as Campoli took a shot after the whistle from Paul Gastad. The Islanders thought it was a cheap shot. We'll take one more look at it. As he came after Campoli, up against the boards after the whistle, and the first one in was Rick DiPietro. Brad Lukowicz was impressed that DiPietro came to his teammates' aid, but they don't want him to do it again. It's not his job. And, uh, you know, it, it was at the end of a period, and, uh, you know, frustration, I guess, set in a little bit, but, uh, you know, he's a very stand-up guy. He's a character guy, and he doesn't let any, anybody push our players around. And, you know, I, I think, you know, that was one of the things that we addressed in between periods is that that never happens again. Our goalie is not the first guy in when one of our guys gets cheap shotted. So, uh, you know, we gotta, you know, we got to stand tough. It's not a matter of uh, going in there and dropping the gloves every time something like that happens, but it's going in there and standing up for each other. You know, just, you know, letting people know that, that you know, that stuff isn't going to happen. Now to tonight's opponent, the Carolina Hurricanes. The game marks the return of former Islanders coach Peter Laviolette. They're coming off of a shootout win against the Pittsburgh Penguins in their home opener. Cam Moore, the 21-year-old rookie goaltender, forced into duty when Marty Gerber got hurt on opening night, was the story. He was terrific, and he shut down three of Pittsburgh's high-flying scorers in a shootout, so they won that game last night. Corey Stillman will also be someone to watch tonight. He came over from Tampa Bay after winning a Stanley Cup. He scored a goal in regulation and you see there he took advantage of the new rules that would have been a two-line pass instead it's a goal in regulation and then Stillman also scored in the shootout and as Carolina held Mario Lemieux, Sidney Crosby and Ziggy Palfi without a goal in the shootout they won it three to two but Stillman is still the man picked up as a free agent this August after winning a Stanley Cup Peter Laviolette said that the Canes needed to amp up the goal scoring and they addressed that in August well, Corey and, and others that we signed this summer, I think, um, helped bring some offense that we were missing. We were not um, offensively, we didn't produce the way we needed to. It's not like we got outworked or defense was not good last year. We didn't score goals, so we brought in guys like Corey Stillman and Oleg Tevardoski and Ray Whitney uh, to help put uh, not only put points on the board from their point of view, but to make the other players on the team better as well. They kept the light on. It was a year and a half in keeping it on, but the Islanders are back for the home opener, and we go behind the bench as Steve Sterling is back with Howie Rose when we continue on Geico Islanders game night right after this. Geico Islanders game night is presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. Salmon spend most of their adult lives in the ocean. Welcome you to our first home studio edition of Behind the Bench with Islanders head coach Steve Sterling. You know that coaches and players are all such creatures of habit. And then you get to the building this morning and there's fog all over the rink and you had to pull them off after about 10 minutes. Does that make any kind of difference to you getting ready for tonight? No, it was just a little bump in the road, Howie. It was uh, sometimes, uh, it might have been a favor. The ice was just average this morning, and the guys were so pumped up and excited that we got them in and got them out, uh, so they're ready for tonight. Let's look back on the opener in Buffalo. What were your overall thoughts about your team? Well, you know, at first, as disappointed as I was, and I was, and you go back and look at the tape, we did some good things. Uh, unfortunately, not enough good things, but uh, we, fell, we fell short because we weren't smart skating with the puck. We let... Uh, we carried the puck and let the puck do the work. We're, uh, what does that mean? I heard well, you say that after the game. Buffalo was moving the puck to spaces and then going to get it. And they were skating and working. We did the same, but we were carrying the puck. And you learn in Pee Wee that it's faster to move the puck, move the puck, then skate to a spot, because you can skate faster that way. So Buffalo was, was better at doing it. And we took, for me, four undisciplined penalties, which... Uh, the, their power play beat our power play and that was the end result. Now four undisciplined penalties can fall into different categories too because coaches what they do after every game is they um, they chart the number of scoring chances but with this plethora of penalties right across the NHL do you now have to characterize each individual penalty as well? Well I do you know I, I, I do because you gotta see one double check and see what kind of call it was see if it was within the rules of what they're doing and most of them were but uh, as I said we had four the other night that that I put in categories of lazy selfish or dumb and how, we how had, would you break that down uh we had one dumb two lazy one selfish <laughs> they're all still all penalties but they're, they're really and, and they're sometimes they're combinations of two mm -hmm. uh, they can be lazy and dumb they can be lazy and selfish 
Uh, but those are just undisciplined. No matter how you slice it, they're undisciplined. Are there demerits once you hit 10 dumb or 5 selfish or something like that? No, it's really... You uh, lose ice time? It's eventually, yeah. It's at some point, uh, the only thing they understand is if they, if they continue to take undisciplined penalties, they got to sit. You know, if they can't police it themselves, then someone has to, and I will, and it's going to sit. And they don't like to sit, uh, but I got enough guys that will play within the rules and will, for the most part, play discipline. That uh, if it continues, they're going to sit, plain and simple. Now, one of, the, one of the penalties you might characterize in there have to do with um, either forwards or defensemen in their own zone clearing the puck up over the glass. Used to be only the goaltenders got penalties. Now those guys get it as well. What? How do you characterize those? Because in some cases it can be accidental, right? Well, and and I think you'll find that most of them are accidental. I think some of the teams around the league, if we just got a directive, are, are taking advantage of it and shooting the puck into the player's bench, which is not a penalty. As if it's in the D zone, uh, they're doing it. But the two we had the other night were, were uh, uh, certainly just clears that we were desperation. We were tired. We were on the penalty kill, and they were clearly not intentional delay of games. So there's not a darn thing we can do about it. you got to be alert on the bench now, Absolutely. too. Huh? Absolutely. Uh, real quickly, your impressions of Carolina coming into this one. Well, I've seen the first two games they played on tape, and I, th I see them as the as young, fast up front, hardworking up front, and they just come at you. And unless you're prepared to skate and meet their intensity, uh, you're going to be in for a long night. All right, our thanks to Islanders head coach Steve Sterling. It's the home opener, and you know the building is going to be buzzing, and nobody responds to that better than the Islanders goaltender Rick DiPietro. We'll play, uh, take a close-up look at a kid who might well be the U.S. Olympic goalie next to February in Turin right after this. Hey, New York, how are you? It is time now to go inside the game. Alexei Yashin is the new captain. The Islanders have a totally revamped defense, but with all the storylines to follow this season, the Islanders, truth be told, will probably go as far as Rick DiPietro takes them, and he is the one in focus. Well, I think in the past, you're, um, as a younger guy, you're always kind of worrying about things you can't control. Um, you have, you know, I had guys like John Van Beesbrook and Chris Osgood and Garth Snow, all those guys ahead of me, and, um, you know, you come to camp trying to push and, and do whatever you can to try to make the team when, you know, in actuality, you know, you might not make it and you're probably going to get sent down. This year, you're just able to come in and relax, have a good time, get to know the guys, and just worry about stopping the puck. It makes it a lot easier on yourself. I've been in and around them for four, four of the five years he's been a pro. I see a maturing young man. Each year I see a little more maturity. Uh, he's ready. He's as ready as he's ever going to be to take the number one role. I think there'll be some bumps in the road, but at 23 or 24, there should be bumps in the road. And if we can get over those bumps uh, and get the ship back straight uh, quickly, uh, I think we'll be fine, but he's ready. I think consistency, I think, is a big factor in this league, especially as a goalie, um, you know, coming into the league. You know, I have a couple good games, and then a couple bad games, and a couple good games, and then a bad game, and a terrible game, and it's just, you can't do that. And I mean, you're a big, a big part of every game, no matter if it's a win or a loss, and um, you got to be good every night, and that's something that uh, took me a little bit of time to learn, and, uh, you know, now it's getting to the point where I feel more and more comfortable with that, and, you know, hopefully as time goes on, I'll get more and more consistent. I think the biggest thing I've seen is he makes uh, tough saves now look routine, and, and that's... I mean, that's huge for a goalie. When you can make it look effortless, it means you're in the right position, you're, you've read the play properly, and, and uh, I'd say that's the biggest thing I've seen. To hear Di Pietro tell it, one of the keys to his growth as a goaltender has been his partner in nets, so Di Pietro was as pleased as snow when the Islanders re-upped their backup for three more years. I took it upon myself to kind of go go to management and tell him um, you know what I thought about him as a person as a player and um, you know and how important he is to this franchise and um, you know he's been my roommate for uh, the last year and you know I've I can't tell you how much I've learned from him as a person, as a player, as a professional, and uh, we're just really happy to have him back. It's never uh, a competition between the two guys because you're just trying to play against the other team. And, you know, the only competition Ricky and I have is when we're on the golf course and I'm <laughs> trying to get three strokes aside. <laughs> Sometimes we'll battle over that. We, we always push each other. I mean, as two goalies, you need to always be competitive and, and um, you know push each other in practice with Sudsy on the, on the ice before practices and during practice. But uh, you know, I mean, especially last year, if if he's playing and he's playing well, 
I have, you know, wish him nothing but the best. We, you know, we get along great. We're, we're great friends off the ice. Like I said, we're roommates. And, um, you know, I think the bottom line between both of us is we want to win. So uh, whoever's playing, the, the other guy's going to be on the bench rooting for him and hoping that he does well. And, um, you know, that's a great relationship we have. Another aspect of the new rules package is designed to keep goaltenders from playing the puck too often. The consensus is mixed, though, as to how that will affect a goalie who has been known to act like a forward on occasion. I don't think Ricky's going to like it all too much, but uh, in a way, I think it'll help out. Um, it's a tough call. I, I kind of agree with both sides because it is a skill, and if a goalie can come out and play the puck, you know, I, on one side I think he should be able to, but on the other side, you know, it, it's it's tough. It makes it real tough to get in there and start a forward check and start any offense, and that's what the league's looking for is more offense. It's going to be tough to get used to. It's something that, as a goaltender who's grown up trying to, you know, perfect that skill to have now have it limited, um, and, you know, it's a little tough to swallow. A lot of us thought we should keep the goaltending uh, puck handling in because it was creating as much chances for the forechecking team as the team was trying to clear the zone, but it is what it is. People were getting to be so highly talented at clearing the, 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 the zone with a puck that um, we just felt it was time to, to limit them a little bit. I saw the American League, when they, when they introduced it, and it didn't affect the goaltending playing the puck as much as I thought it was going to. So I don't think it'll affect Ricky too much. It, where it will affect Ricky is on real soft chips into the corner on dumps. Uh, he won't be able to get to them. There's just not enough time. But any other play, Ricky's quick enough and a good enough skater that he'll get to a lot of pucks just like he did in the past. I think everyone in the league knows how well he plays the puck. You know, so it, it's, it's a, that's a bonus for us. It's like having that third defenseman. He makes that first pass for you which is going to be huge with no red line. Uh, you know, guys make a bad, uh, bad dump and he can get out there and shoot it past the red line again, and that transition is just going to be right there. DiPietro had a pretty interesting stat line after game one in Buffalo, 33 saves and assist and a roughing penalty. So Rick DiPietro will play tonight in front of the coach that he may play for in the Olympics in February. And he is looking for his first win for Steve Sterling against the Carolina Hurricanes as the Islanders get set for their home opener. 25 home wins a year ago, the best record at home in the Eastern Conference back after this. Talking crazy, Frank. Presented by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. Hi again, everybody. Gary Apple in our New York studios. Back to the Coliseum momentarily. Also tonight, the Rangers and Devils facing off in New Jersey. Martin Brodeur looks to continue his mastery of the blue shirts. Marty has lost just one of his past 15 games against the Rangers. He's got nine wins and five ties in that span. Also, Ilya Kovalchuk is a very wealthy man tonight. The restricted free agent has signed a five-year, $32 million deal with Atlanta. He's expected in the Thrashers lineup this upcoming Wednesday or Friday. The Kovalchuk and put up some pretty big numbers. Don't forget he's missed Atlanta's first two games as well as their entire training camp, but he can score big time in the season. Prior to the lockout, Kovalchuk was tied for the NHL lead with 41 goals. He finished the season with 87 points, 32 more than anybody else on Atlanta with deciding the Thrashers. Very close now to the league imposed $39 million salary cap. 12 games on the NHL schedule on this Saturday night, including the Thrashers hosting the Capitals, the Canadiens, and the Maple Leafs. In Toronto, somebody will lose their first game as the Sabres visit the Senators. It is the Battle of Florida beginning at 7.30 in Tampa. Sidney Crosby looking for his first NHL goal. The Penguins host the Bruins. The Sharks and Blues beginning at 8 Eastern. Both teams in search of their first win of the year. Also, the Mighty Ducks visit the Predators. The Stars host the Avalanche. The great one, uh, Wayne Gretzky, in search of his his first coaching win as Phoenix hosts the Wild and finally at 10 Eastern time, Vancouver and Edmonton get together up north of the 
border. Of course, a lot of eyes will be on Wayne Gretzky. Continues to make some early season mistakes behind the bench. Can the great one put it together? We will see later this evening. It's the Islanders and the Hurricanes up next here on FSN New York. Enjoy the game, everybody. We'll see you a bit later on. discipline the other night against Buffalo wasn't very good. We took too many penalties and uh, you know tonight against any team in this league uh, now everyone's beefed up their lineup. Uh, there's so much skill out there that we have to you know play hard but still stay disciplined. How long does it seem it's been since you guys have been here ready to go on the ice? Well it's just you know it's been a year and a half and it's been tough and uh, you know it's just exciting to hear the crowd out there. Uh, you know our fans are the best fans in the NHL. They haven't gone anywhere and uh, they're here to uh, you know support a winner. and get ready for the player introductions. Number eight, Tony Patton. Number 11, Matthias Weihandel. Number 12, Ole Kavasha. Number 14, Chris Campoli. 
back after this. NHL met the New Islanders on opening night. There were some familiar faces in all of the usual places. But there was an infusion of young blood and new players looking to make a name for themselves now that they're wearing an Islanders sweater. As the league welcomes back the game tonight, they all say hello to the hometown crowd. This is a look inside the Islanders dressing room. It has been redone. They had a year and a half while they waited for the players to come back as you see some beautiful black and whites of Islanders history in the four Stanley Cups in the dynasty run. And we welcome you back for a 33rd season of New York Islanders hockey. I'm Deb Kaufman in our studios. They are continuing the pregame ceremonies. You heard big ovations for all of the players. We talked to some of them as they arrived before the game tonight on what they expected the fan reaction tonight to be. That's always an exciting day for us. Uh, it's been a while since we've been back at home. <clears throat> so it's, uh, you know, hopefully the fans are going to be into it and uh, definitely the players are going to be uh, definitely revved up for it. I think hockey fans in general are probably the most loyal of any sports. And uh, I mean, I think they'll be great. I'm mean, pretty sure it's going to be close to sold out and should be loud. So from the current Islanders to an Islander past and Bobby Nystrom, the one and only on the ice to drop the ceremonial first puck. Alexi actually brought bring more of the two captains, shaking the hand of Bobby Nystrom as we go upstairs to our Islander greats and the guys who will call Deb and Bobby Nye is a guy that was around Long Island all through the lockout. He uh, lived here throughout his entire playing career. He has continued to live here since retiring as a player and still very much a part of the fabric of this Islander franchise, Joe. You see him all over the place. He hasn't, even though he gets busy with business, you talk about going to charitable events and that type of thing, and he's always there. Well, the business of hockey has come back to the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum, and it certainly is about time. Rick DiPietro will be in goal for the Islanders, and the other half of the goaltending matchup tonight, Joe, is a big story, Cam Ward. Boy, he was something last night. He had his first NHL start last night, just 21 years of age, a first-round pick of Carolina back in 2002, and Mark, Martin Gerber, who was signed as a free agent, from um, uh, Anaheim was their number one, but he was hurt. There's, of course, Peter LaViolette, the former Islander coach, and now the head coach in Carolina. And Cam Ward last night was spectacular. Led 2-0 going into the third. Pittsburgh scored twice, and then they won it in a shootout, and he stopped Mario Lemieux, Ziggy Palfi, and that other young kid that's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, that Crosby fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Sterling wants a little more discipline out of his team tonight, and he'll start the Yashin line with Nielsen and Shatan up front, Brent Sokol and Alexei Zitnik on defense, and immediately the Hurricanes shoot the puck into the crowd. Yeah, you, you talk about Steve Sterling, and he said, you know, we, we skated, but we didn't skate as smart as Buffalo did, which is a very quick team. We tried to skate with the puck instead of letting the puck do the work, passing it, and then moving to the openings. He said, we've got to do that tonight because this Carolina team is very quick up front. When Wesley, number two, back to touch up for an icing. Wesley is part of a veteran defense tandem that Peter Laviolette uses. Wesley plays along with Oleg Tevardovsky, who had played in Russia the last couple of years and signed over the summer as a free agent. Speaking of veterans, we've got one of the outstanding veteran referees in the building tonight, Kerry Fraser, who works along with Mike Lego. Pierre Champoux, Mike, uh, Michel Cormier on the lines. 
And from the draw, Shatan took a little bump along the boards by Brett Hedick in number six. And the puck swept back towards the Carolina line. Shatan tried to send Nielsen in, couldn't get it there. And then it's flicked ahead by Corey Stillman, number 61. But Sokol has it back for the Islanders. And a touch pass sends Yashin on his way. Up to the Carolina line. Yashin can't get through the work of Brett Hedekin. And the puck sits behind the net, but Shatan plays it. Miroslav Shatan to Zitnik. Alexei Zitnik in deep. As the Islander defense were doing almost regularly in the game in Buffalo. Well, and Howie, the Islander defense should be open tonight because under Peter Laviolette's system, Carolina, they, all five players come back to the net in their own zone. And so the point men should be wide open for the Islanders. Both teams change on the move a minute and ten into this first period here at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Headman feed broken up in center, and the Hurricanes send it back in as Bates with a good hit on Eric Cole, who wears number 26. That's Yanni Ninema for the Islanders, starting to move it up for Kavasha. But then he turns it over in center and took a man down. Kavasha's going to wind up getting a penalty as he knocked down Matt Cullen. And the Hurricanes, Nicholas Valine, number seven, keeps the puck. As the Hurricanes get Ward to the bench, they've got an extra skater on. Zygamanis, number 18, sent it in. And as it's played by Petman, we get the whistle. And Ola Kavash is going to go to the penalty box. Yeah, there's Kavasha watching 12. Just not much. A little bit of a push. And Cullen was a little off balance. He didn't take a dive, but he was just already off balance. So it didn't take much to knock him down. That's been one of the big concerns, hasn't it, that coaches have had trying to identify the dive now, which is becoming more and more of a factor, given what you cannot do when you're defending. Yeah, but if you read the box score, you've got referees that are calling the dive around the league. They're trying to keep a keen eye out for players that are trying to draw penalties. So the Islanders to the penalty kill, where they spent a lot of time in Buffalo. They had to try to kill off 11 and gave up two power play goals. And here's a lead for Blake, driving towards the net, shorthanded, can't find the handle as he was checked by Stahl. Eric Stahl, number 12, hounded by Blake. Blake works it free, out to the blue line, with a shot, a stick save made by Ward. And then the rebound came to the stick of Blake. A good shot there by Lukowicz from the point. And now back the other way comes Williams, number 11. And as he moved laterally, that forced the play offside. 43 seconds into the penalty to Kavasha. Uh, what a shift by Jason Blake. And you don't think the people here appreciate that? A long pass initially. And then that started all the pressure. Lukowicz ends up with this shot, but it was Lukowicz that started the play with the long pass. And then Blake just kept buzzing, kept going. Asham, Parrish, Ninema, and Petnin are the Islander penalty killers. Di Pietro couldn't clear. Now Cole, a backhander goes wide. Zygamanis, number 18, to Cole. And that quick shot went to the left of Di Pietro. Good hit by Asham, but Cole recovers. And Di Pietro with a glove save on Eric Cole. Eric Cole was so impressive last night in the game. He had a very, very good training camp. Big, strong, and can really skate. He got hurt with about nine and a half minutes left last night. He got cross-checked in the back. And, uh, but is back in there tonight. He was questionable for this game. And in the last 30 seconds, he had three pretty good scoring chances. So 58 seconds left to the Carolina power play. They win the draw. Cullen gets it from Hutchinson. And now the Hurricanes spread it out, looking for their first power play goal of the year. They're 0 for 10 over their first two games. And now they'll have to flush out of the Islanders zone. Now Zygamanis carries in. Michael Zygamanis left it for Cullen. Centering feed. Di Pietro got a stick on it with Brindamore headed towards the net. Recovered by Zygamanis back at the blue line. Half minute to the power play. Lukovic and Asham applying defensive pressure. Brindamore goes to the corner, sweeps it towards the net. Di Pietro got a piece of that, and then it's peeled out of the zone by Bates. And Di Pietro is needed to be sharp on plays right in front. Yeah, he anticipated that pass and, and did a wonderful thing with the stick by just using his stick, almost like a defenseman, to get to the puck before it got to the Carolina player on the side of the net. Final six of the power play. Good work by Petman. Starts the Islanders on a rush. In over the line, York centers. Hunter! Saved by Ward. York has it back. Teams back at full strength. The Hurricanes managed two shots during that power play. And Carolina comes to center, led by Joseph Wazicek, number 63. Ninema could not cleanly field that dump, and so Wazicek gets it back. But then he lost it, and Jason Blake sends it ahead. 
Pittman to the red line. And now the Islanders will change up. Blake on the forecheck. Got it back to Pettman. York was shoved by Commodore number 22. Corey Stillman number 61. Turned it over. Shatana wraparound save. What a second save. And a big save that was on a great chance from right out in front by Mike York. And now Hedekin finds Wozniczek. But he was well covered by Brent Sopel. And now Sopel scampers back into the play. You know how Shatan was on the side of the net. He did not see York wide open in front of the net. Instead, he tried to stuff it in from somewhat of a bad angle. The puck did come to York. But I think the scoring chance would have been much better had Shatan seen York and fed him the puck. Campoli and Sopel, the Islander defense pair right now. Brindamore missed it, but it's recovered by Nordgren. This is Nicholas Nordgren, number 44, moving it along. It goes off Yashin's skate. Wesley, number two for Carolina, with a wrist shot that's grabbed by Di Pietro. As Sokol keeps the area in front of Rick Clear. Boy, great, great pace to this game. Here's Shatan. Watch him try and stop it. Look at York. York is all alone, but then does get a rebound. And Ward, the young goaltender, who they say is very calm and cool in that. He shows it right there just by staying there, letting the puck hit him. So Shatan, who hasn't been shooting much and hasn't scored a goal yet as an Islander, decided to try and take the shot from the angle there. And they're nearly able to get it past Ward. Islanders have a fourth line out right now with Bergenheim, or at least the Nokalina number 29, Winehandle, and Asham. Uh, Asham is playing his first game after missing the Buffalo match because of bruised ribs. But those fourth liners don't get a lot of ice time these days for any team. Aaron Asham moving in, centers across it, the flex to Ward, and then the net is knocked off as Nokalinen went in hard. And let's see if a penalty is called. As Nokalainen was taken in in front of the net, Barry Fraser headed over the table, and the Islanders going to get a power play out of this. And Nokalainen did a good job going to the net. This fourth line gave the Islanders a little bit of energy here. There's the pass by Asham. Nokalainen going to the front of the net gets knocked down from behind and slides into the goaltender. Again, Ward was able just to hold his position and prevent the puck from going in. Islanders on the power play. So Nordgren in the box for the cross check. And Brett Hedekin, also known as the husband of skater Christy Yamaguchi, yeah. fires they, it all the way down. They uh, had a baby during the lockout, and his wife is pregnant again and due in the next month or so. Islanders gain the zone on the power play. Shatan for Zitnik. They're both up high. Now Zitnik tries to play it across. Cole got a piece of it, but the Islanders get it back. Shatan Looking to feed down low. Adams got in the way of that. Yashin digging for it. And Jitnik unable to hold it into the blue line. And the Islanders have to come back out of the zone. 37 gone on the power play. Shatan plays it deep. Parrish is after it. Nielsen behind the net with nobody in front. Robert Nielsen moving back towards the blue line under severe pressure there from Hedekin. But that stick came up. And it didn't come up on the play back near the blue line. It came closer to the net. Yeah, Parrish is going to get the call. He, he was in front. He doesn't like the call. He's still in argument. But Parrish is going off for cross-checking. And so we'll play four on four. And then Carolina will have a short power play. Now Steve Sterling is talking about that. Here it is again. Look at Parrish. Oh, that didn't take much. I mean, you talk about a dive. Commodore's a big, strong kid, and he, he went down like nothing. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a strong kid. 6'5", 228 for starters. Now, now, that, now that you would you would classify as a dive. Well, either that or Parrish did a lot of lifting over the summer. <laughs> four on four as Sopo gains the zone. In 50 seconds, the Hurricanes will have some power play time. And now Sopel tees it up with his skate. He's bothered by Stahl. Hunter and York combining behind the net. York got knocked down. Wesley takes him in. York trying to protect the puck. Wozniczek, number 63, in there as well. And Glenn Wesley pries it loose. Kavardovsky reverses, although he paid a price as Hunter took him in. And here's a lead. Onside for Stahl. A breakaway. He scores. Well, there's that long pass legislated into the rules for this year and a spring Eric stall for a breakaway goal one what to a, nothing hurricane pass 
Joseph Wasichek with the pass. I mean, it was beautiful. And Stahl just from the boards cut right to the middle, got behind everybody, and there's the pass, Wasichek. I mean, it was perfect. And Stahl, one of the good young players in the league, keeps getting better and better every year. And Stahl scored a goal last night, gets another one here to give Carolina a 1-0 lead, but it was a beautiful outlet pass by Wasichek. So Stahl has scored in all three Carolina games. That was his brother that uh, is the draft pick of the New York Rangers, young defenseman. That's Mark Stahl. Now Brindamore draped by Ninema. And now the Hurricanes on the power play and a backhander by Aaron Ward, number four, fails to get through. So Nordgren out of the box, heads to the bench, and briefly the Hurricanes have a power play, another 39 seconds. You know, and that was Aaron Ward, normally known as a defensive defenseman, but these Carolina defense will move up into the play as often as they can. Very aggressive offensive team. The Gamana spins it around, and Di Pietro in his office winds it around off the skate of Kavasha. Islanders just trying to push it out of the zone here. Couldn't do it. It hit a skate. Cullen going wide. Matt Cullen to Brindamore that hopped over his stick. 12 to the power play. Nice feed by Brindamore. Cullen's drive and Di Pietro grabs that. Now this is a different offensive team, Carolina, than, than we saw back a couple of years ago. I mean, Cullen is an offensive player that they added. Ray Whitney, who is not playing because he's injured, is an offensive player. Stahl is only going to get better, as, we, as we've seen tonight, him scoring a goal. A pretty good offensive team. Whitney is out with a groin injury, and so Peter Laviolette has been forced to take that offensive player from his lineup. But uh, there have been a number of players over the first few days who have gone down with groin problems, which is not totally unexpected. Not everybody played last year. Training camp was shorter this year than it has been in the past. And so several players feeling the effects, and Ray Whitney is one of them. And a good hit there by Aaron Ward. Freed the puck away from Parrish. Nordgren a drive. Di Pietro left the rebound, but it was slapped out of the zone by Zitnik. And here comes Shatan. Arrow Shatan pulling up all the way to the blue line. Nordgren starts it the other way. Jesse Bulleris, number 36. Energy forward who got into a fight last night and helped get the Hurricanes' tempo back up. Help get it the other way. And now Shatan goes after it in the corner with Wesley. Stall in there as well. Shatan on the puck getting some help from first Yashin and then Nielsen. And Stahl made a nice move to turn away from Robert Nielsen, but the Islanders keep it in. Chatan double team, turned it over, and Stahl races ahead. Stahl to the right wing, Stillman. Now Corey Stillman looks for some help. Ninema got a piece of him. Stahl and Weinhandel get there together. Stahl tried to put it in front, and Di Pietro holds it on the side of the net with 10.24 to go in the first period. Hockey's back. Welcome back, hockey. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. EA Sports. It's in the game. Hey, New York. Four on four sequence. And with 10.24 to go in the opening period, the draw is deep in the Islanders' zone. Mike York will take it against Matt Cullen. Peter LaViolette was just hoping to get through this first 10 minutes because the team played last night. There's a shot by Cole that sticked away by Di Pietro. Well, Cole's had some chances, hasn't he? Clock, by the way, at center ice has not started since they dropped the puck. So they'll have to readjust that as an icing is called. And now Trent Hunter comes in. He and Hedekin, along with Cole, get into some wrestling. Sopel has a Hurricane player in a bit of a headlock behind the net as well. well he cross-checked Jason Blake just as the whistle had gone. And remember, there was all the talk the other night. In fact, the Islanders discussed this after the second period in Buffalo about how you have to stand up for one another, start getting in there a little bit, and be more of a, be more of a team in those types of scrums, those situations. There's Jason Blake. Now watch what happens. That's Commodore, who you mentioned is six foot. 
big boy. 6'5", yeah. 6'5", 228, soaking wet. Yeah, see, then Hunter jumped in, and then from the other side, here comes Sopel and the rest of the Islanders to help out. This is exactly what they discussed that they did not have against Buffalo. Well, I guess when your goaltender is the first one in, as Di Pietro was the other night, it sends a message to everyone. And, uh, they had to talk about that afterwards. So, Rick basically won't have to worry about any of that stuff for the time being, but nothing develops there in terms of penalties. The end zone clocks are working fine. The overhead scoreboard is not, as Di Pietro gathers in that drive from the blue line by Brett Hedekin. So we'll step out with 9.58 to go in the opening period in Carolina on top. Building tonight for the home opener. And the Islanders, as they will on Saturday nights, clad in orange, and so are many of the fans. Nicholas Valine tries to make a play from along the goal line, couldn't do it. Islanders have Blake, York, and Hunter out against the Brindamore line with Nordgren and Williams. Nordgren, number 44, a guy that's impressed Peter Laviolette with his quickness and his good hands. And here's Jason Blake, all by himself, dribbling it off a skate. Hunter and Valine collide. And the centering feet picked off by Wark. And along comes Williams for Carolina. But York got right back to him. The Islanders could not connect in transition. And Williams softly plays it into the Islander bench for a whistle. Now this line has, has been a good line. York, Hunter, Blake. And in talking to Steve Sterling this morning about his team, as you look at Justin Williams, one of the young, quick forwards, but Steve Sterling was saying that, you know, the positives that came out of that Buffalo game, and it's been a positive throughout, is the play of those players together. Here's Stahl lugging it to the net, denied by Di Pietro. And the collision forces the net off of its moorings. Boy, Boy. Stahl, impressive, isn't he? He and Cole, both of them, driving hard to the net. strong, and then Wasichek's the same way. Big, strong kid, and they're, well, they basically told him, how are they going to stop you guys? you got speed, you can handle the puck. I mean, he just, this is a turnover in the neutral zone by the Islanders. And look at Stahl. This is a good, this is a good play defensively by Brad Lukowicz. Well, it's tough to slow them down now. And so that kind of speed and size is being rewarded. Well, is... you, you have to have perfect positioning. If you don't have perfect positioning and keep your, and keep moving and pull someone down, you're going to be penalized. You don't even have to pull them down. Yashin lost it or really couldn't hold it. He never had clear possession. And as they go to the corner, Wazicek turns it over and up comes Yashin. Yashin hounded by Brindamore for Shatan. Yashin with a nice play with his skate just to keep that play on side and allow some time for Shatan to get in and help out. So Yashin draws two Hurricane players to him, but Brindamore neatly took it away from Alexi Yashin. And that'll enable the Hurricanes to change up. And the Islanders try to exploit that with a quick pass. Shatan put it behind Yashin, then was hit by Commodore. Back comes Adams for the Hurricane. His shot went wide. The big carom. Di Pietro had to slide along the goal line, but the Hurricanes keep it. Commodore throws it at the net, and that skips away. Shatan under some pressure. All the way to the near boards, and Nielsen will slow things down. With eight minutes remaining in the first period, Islanders got about seven minutes, Joe, without a shot. Carolina's got a lot of energy, don't they? I mean, they are they are skating. They've been quick on the puck. And they played last night. And they played last night. They played a physical game. They arrived at about 2 o'clock last night and had an optional skate this morning. But this is a quick team. Di Pietro makes a good save there. The first shot went wide, came off the boards, and it took him a little bit of a while to pick it up. But he, he came back with an outstanding save. Bates, Kavasha, and Parrish, the Islander forward line. Kavasha trying to get through, but took a penalty. Yep. He tied up the lead. You know, he, everything was just about right. He was on the puck. He used his skate to keep it going and knew he had a player coming in, but there's no question. He, he let go of the stick, used his free hand to grab the Carolina player, and referee Kerry Frazier was right there. Uh, and again, it's a bad penalty. Watch, he does this. Good job, good job, good job, but his free hand has the stick of all in, and down he goes. And that negates what would have been a pretty good scoring chance by the Islanders, and instead they're shorthanded again. So the Islanders will go to the penalty kill for the third time here in the first period. And the Hurricanes put the power play to work. Carolina has had five shots over their first two power plays. Cullen, 
ahead from Prindamore. He tries to center, but DiPietro takes care of that personally and gets the whistle, but that'll mean a face-off deep in the Islanders' zone. Now there's Rod Brindamore, the new captain of the Carolina Hurricanes. Of course, Ron Francis, who was traded late that uh, two seasons ago to Toronto in, a, in an attempt to win one more Stanley Cup, was traded to Toronto and then retired after that. So Rod Brindamore, right, there's, there's no one on the team that was more of a natural fit and a natural choice for Carolina than Roddy Brindamore. He's been around 16 years as Brindamore, 35 years old. Ron Francis, by the way, was at the morning skate yesterday in Raleigh, but did not stay for the game. We're going to honor him by retiring his number. Lukowicz got a piece of that centering feed. He was trying to find the right date in Raleigh. Now Cullen backing up at the point. Plays it across. Andrew Hutchinson, number 24. Hutchinson's a defenseman that only plays the power play. And now Zygimanis, number 18, for Hutchinson, lets one go. That was blocked by Lukowicz. Asham slides out as well, but Cole's got the puck. Eric Cole all the way through to Cullen. That's a tough pass to get through traffic. Cole did it, but now Zitnik bumps into Cole. And the puck batted by Lukowicz, and Bates will spring Asham. One man back in a second coming. Asham's drive and a kick save made by Ward. That's something where the Islanders are even strength that Scott Sterling or Steve Sterling wants to see Asham do more. And that's fire the puck. He's got a good shot. Yes, he does. 44 seconds left to the power play. Stall. Wrist shot. The flex in front. Williams couldn't tee it up. Islanders got a break as they helped out defensively, yeah. too. Ninema. Good job by him. Williams looking for a play. Severdowski now. Wrists one off the skate of Parrish. Nenem up, lost it to Wozicek. This is big Joseph Wozicek, number 63. Healing it out to the blue line. Stall with 16 to the power play for Williams. Darts towards the net, put it in front. Wozicek stopped by the left hand of Di Pietro. Knocked that it out of midair. Now Stahl working it ahead. Williams centering feed, but Everdowski in deep was tied up. Wozicek gets it back, penalty over. Good sliding block there by Pettinen to get it loose from Stillman. Stillman, though, regains it. Wozicek shot, and that deflects wide. And the Islanders really scrambling here in their own zone. Now they're tired. They can't get off the ice. And it won't help them to ice the puck, because if you do so, you're not allowed to make a change. Hurricanes had two shots on that power play. Hedekin trying to walk right in. And Hunter, the last line of defense. And Yanni Nenema plays it ahead. And here come the Islanders. Kavasha by himself for the time being. Goes to the backhand, and Ward got a piece of that. Now if they rule it a shot, Sokol's shot stopped. There are the first Islanders' shots in nearly half a period. Oh, he, Rick DiPietro is keeping his team in it. and Sopel come together. Sopel couldn't get it all the way around, but gets a second chance. And Whitehandle pulls up. Checked by Adams. Hurricanes all over the place. Adams backhander pad save. Rebound sits in front. Played neatly to the boards. And taken out at the same time by Sopel. Needs the right wing. Hunter. Campoli looking for York. But Wesley got back to break that up. Weinhandel keeps it deep, but now the Islanders need a change. 4.22 to go in the opening period. And now it's Aaron Ward having it cut off by Di Pietro. Di, now, Di Pietro's made seven, eight, maybe nine outstanding saves here in this period. The teams have had a lot of chances from right in close. And here's Cole maybe with another one. Uh, that was deflected away by Alexi Zitnik. Now Ward under pressure from Shatan. Zygamanis failed to get it in front. And Zitnik starts the Islanders on their way. Nielsen up the left wing. Pulling up, looking for Yashin. He's forced to the boards, though. 3.40 to go in the period. Islanders keep it. Shatan to Lukowicz. And then Ninemus shot went wide. Some traffic in front. Yashin got tangled up with a goaltender. Comes back to Yashin. Couldn't snap a shot off. And then it's sent into the corner neatly by Zygamanis. And the Islanders trying to get something going here, but Lukowicz missed it. Two on one develops. This is Cole playing it across. And the centering feed did not come through from Zygamanis. And back comes Yashin. But he over.
Weber skates it. And Cole. Now for Stahl. Stahl knocked down. And then Commodore follows and hits that loose stick on the ice. But Kavasha couldn't come clean with it. Creating a chance for Stillman that DP Entro denies. Islanders scrambling with 2.56 left in the first. Oh, another giveaway by the Islanders. That's Kavasha. And again, Di Pietro. Boy, has he been good here in the period. That's two excellent saves again. And he's keeping his team in it with under three minutes to go. Shots are 16 to 5. It's felt like 26 to 5. As good as he's been, that's how much Kavasha has struggled. Edekin's shot winds up in the corner. Hurricanes have had 13 of the last 14 shots. And that covers the last 12 and a half minutes. That's a pretty fair indication of how this thing has gone. Di Pietro keeping the Islanders in. And that pass deflects away. It comes to Commodore. Oh, uh -huh, something. Kavasha gets it back, but Stahl got his stick on Kavasha's attempt. I was, gonna, I was going to say that similar to the Buffalo game from the standpoint that the Islanders with a couple of bad penalties and it takes away any kind of momentum. They've had, they've had some good even strength shifts, but not enough of them. And then they take a penalty and then the, the momentum swings the other way. And Carolina, just they, they've been outstanding here in the first period. They're skating, they're attacking the net, they're forcing turnovers, they're getting everyone involved. And again, Di Pietro's been really the difference in the game. Campoli snaps one off a leg. And Brindamore peels it out of the zone. The York line against the Brindamore line right now. The York's line's been pretty good in this first period for the Islanders, maybe generating or trying to a little bit more than the others. I agree. Williams hit by a pinching Lukowicz. Tverdovsky comes away with it. Tverdovsky played the last two seasons in Russia. In the last year the NHL played. Tverdovsky was not part of it. Blake missed York, but they'll wave off icing because that was an attempted pass. And now Nordgren, number 44. This Nordgren guides it in. And both teams change. You mentioned Nordgren, 26-year-old, first year in the league, and he was the big surprise in camp for Carolina. That was a player they just simply didn't expect to make the team. Now Shatan in front. Asham trying to tee it up. Slides it down low. Shatan shoved by Valine. And no penalty called. Yashin got it as far as the corner. Asham takes it out of that corner where it's swept wide by Yaroslav Shatan. Eric Cole challenged by Pentnin. Again, those Islander defensemen, boy, finding them in the corners in the offensive zone quite a bit as that puck deflects up into the bench. All season long, you can watch Islanders home games in high definition on FSN New York with crystal clear widescreen images and Dolby Digital Sound. FSN New York in high def, available only on cable. Now, the last two days, the Islanders in practice did a lot of drills to work on pace and moving the puck and keeping skating and, and, and playing smart. Sterling just felt that his team, with their quickness up front, didn't show it as much on the Buffalo game. 112 to go in this period. The Islanders have been outshot 17 to 5. Stahl's goal has Carolina on top. Now Corey Stillman who had the shootout winner last night. As far as the Islander line, Jitnik slaps it the other way. Well, we get a whistle with 58.6 left. And the Hurricanes have also dominated the Islanders on the draw for the most part in this period. Remember, there have been a lot of defensive zone draws for the Islanders, which have created further scoring opportunities for Carolina. 15 to 7 has been their edge in faceoff. They've got one of the best in Rod Brindamore. He's been that way for years. Edekin pinched, but turned it over in the corner. And it's sent all the way down. Cavasho racing with Commodore. Cavasho going to the outside. Commodore took him in. Bates helps out. And Stillman equals that out. Ozacek turned it over to a pinching Sopel. And that backhander hits the side of the net. Down to 24 to go in the period. Ozacek hammers it out and Jitnik takes it back. Bates waiting at the blue line. Islanders making one last change in this period. Commodore got the glove up on Bates. The play continues. But hit behind the net. And that one sent all the way down. Icing waved off, and that'll pretty much take care of the first period. Dominated most of the time by Carolina. 17-5, the Hurricanes outshot New York. And a large...
largely because of the work of Rick DiPietro. It's just Stahl's goal, which is on the board. Yeah, Stahl on the breakaway, but this game started off pretty much even until the Islanders started taking penalties. When that happened, Carolina kind of found their legs. Remember, they played last night. They were able to generate some offense. They, get, they got a little bit of, of energy to their game. And then after that, the Islanders just simply weren't able to recover. So, one period in the books here in the home season for the Islanders and the Hurricanes off to a one to nothing lead. Debs up next. It's about intensity. It's about excitement. It's about action. And it's about time you became a part of it all. The New York Islanders are back and they're better than ever. With a potent mix of seasoned vets and hungry fresh faces, the Islanders are poised to take the new NHL by storm. Full and partial season ticket packages available. For tickets, call 1-800-882-ISLES or visit us at www.NewYorkIslanders.com. Hockey is back and the New York Islanders are ready for action. Are you? Club Chatan, and it's been such an open game the first couple of nights. Did you expect it to be this way with the rules changes? Yeah, we, we knew it's going to be a different game, and uh, like I said, it's it's very open. But uh, you know, still, it's an old uh, thinking. We have to take care of the Ireland first, and then think about offense. So we have to, you know, improve in that area a little bit. I know you and Alexi were working things out, you and Yashin, during the preseason. You thought maybe you were trying to set each other up a little more and to take your own shot. Do you feel like you're getting your own shot again? Um, you know, we still, I think it's a process. We still have to, you know, work on it. And uh, today we, we already had some chances, but, uh, you know, it's still, uh, we're missing a little bit, uh, maybe luck or, you know, maybe a little bit more work to, to put it in. So hopefully that's going to happen in the next period. All right. Thanks, Miro. Thank you. All right. 29 goals a year ago for Buffalo. Miroslav Shatan still looking for his first for the Islanders. We'll take a quick break and continue with much more at the intermission for the Islanders home opener from the Coliseum right after this. New York Islanders hockey is brought to you in part by Panasonic Ideas for Life. And Eric Stahl, goal for Carolina, has the Canes up on the Islanders one to nothing. And forgive and forget, it's uh, easy to forget that the uh, lockout lasted as long as it did. There was some concern, would fans come back? Well, so far, so good. The fans have taken warmly to the sport as it, as it has relaunched. A sellout here tonight and over 500 days without hockey at the Coliseum. These fans waited a long time for the home opener, but they did come out in force tonight. We asked the Islanders before the game if they have been surprised all around the league that fans have come back so quickly. Look at the attendance. It's uh, I think it was 98% capacity so far around the league, and that just goes to show how great the hockey fans have been. It's been great, um, you know, to, to see the lots of support and, and lots of fans out there. Uh, you know, it, it makes it a lot more fun to be out there playing. It was a long layoff, and, and the fans that suffer suffer the most. So uh, it's just a great it's a great game, and for them to come back and uh, you know accept us, it's uh, it's it's great for us. So the fans have come back to the Nassau Coliseum. Unfortunately for the home fans at the moment, Carolina doesn't look like a team that played last night. And the Islanders haven't yet looked like a team playing in front of their home crowd. But uh, still just one period in the books. This is how we started the night. That would be a grand introduction or a grand entrance as Sparky knows how to make an entrance right over the red carpet. A quick break, and we'll continue with more at the intermission. Highlights are next with Haugen Joe. He needs to land on the red carpet. Back up. What is the period? The Hurricanes have the only goal. And I'll tell you what, Pierre Laviolette's team looked pretty quick in that first period. As far as the Islanders are concerned, I would think they would still want their discipline to be better. Well, that, and I think they're. I think you're going to see them with more legs in the second period. You know, sometimes and it happens often where teams, after playing on the road, they have their home opener and everybody's hyped up, and you're playing against a team that played last night, and you come out and you have a couple of days off and you've got nothing. And that's the way the Islanders looked in that period. So I think they'll come out in the second period with more energy, more legs, start skating a little bit, and thank God for DiPietro. Well, he clearly was the best Islander in that first period as the Hurricanes outshot the Islanders by a severe margin over the latter part of the period. 
Well, here's the goal by Stahl. A beautiful pass from Wasichek, and Stahl on the breakaway uses the wrist shot to beat uh, Di Pietro over the over the glove hand. That was the only goal of the period. But the whole story was was Di Pietro. I mean, the Islanders easily could be down by five or six goals at this point with all the chances that Carolina had. And it was uh, Di Pietro. He's very sharp around the front of the net. Not only on many occasions had to stop the first shot, but had to stop a second shot as well. Carolina, I thought, kind of took control of the game when they were on the power play. They got going. That shot was knocked right out of midair by Wasichek. And again, Di Pietro had to be sharp with the left leg. A problem also in the in the period for the Islanders were turnovers. And again, Carolina was the team that was scaling. The Islanders were the team that was uh, standing still and, and giving the puck away. The shots were 17 to 5, Carolina, but the Islanders trailed by just one. Day. So head on over to the Coliseum if you can and cheer on the Islanders as they face the Florida Panthers, winners of their first two games this year. Game time is 1 p.m. And the first 10,000 fans in attendance get a rally towel courtesy of Lincoln Mercury. Tickets are available at the Coliseum box office, Ticketmaster.com, or charge by phone at 631-888-9000. How about a trade early in the season? trade that happened tonight. Wow, five months before the deadline. Columbus, Just got it in there. <laughs> Columbus and Phoenix. Uh, Jeff Sanderson, who's been around the league for a long, long time, lots of speed, goal scorer, and Tim Jackman, who's a young right winger, uh, go from Columbus to Phoenix. You know Mike Rupp scored the game winning goal in the Stanley right. Cup playoffs a few years ago. Uh, Kale Hulst was a big, strong defenseman. And Mark Shimura go from Phoenix to Columbus. So Columbus, uh, so Phoenix having trouble scoring a few goals under Wayne Gretzky. They pick up Jeff Sanderson to try and score a little bit more. And suddenly those players, the offensive players, are finding a little more room to work with and uh, better opportunities to score. Now, the Islanders are wearing their second set of jerseys for this second period. The sweaters they wore in the first period are going to be given for auction as part of the Hockey Cares program to benefit the Hurricane Katrina Relief Fund. And uh, the auction is going to be held online. You can get a whole lot of information by going either to uh, NewYorkIslanders.com or NHL.com and find out all the specifics of uh, the National Hockey League and the National Hockey League Players Association in a collaborative effort trying to help out the victims of Hurricane Katrina by auctioning off game-worn jerseys. And every NHL team is doing that with their first home game this year. Shot came through to the right of Di Pietro by Nordgren, and Di Pietro called on to stop Nordgren again right at the beginning of this second period. Yeah, it's a good pass from Rod Brindamore from behind the net. Nordgren somehow was able to get his stick right between two Islander players, and the pass came from Brindamore right on the tape. Very quickly how Carolina gets in there, and there's Brindamore, and there's the pass. Two Islanders right there, but Nordgren able to get the shot. Di Pietro forced to make another save. Stahl, Adams, and Wazicek for Carolina in the York line out for the Islanders. That's with Blake and Hunter. This is Trent Hunter, number seven, lifting it through center. Sent back along by Commodore, but recovered by Ninema. Ninema and Pettnett, the Islander defense pair. And now York up left wing. Left it for Blake, a drive, and that one missed the net. Petman, though, protects it just inside the blue line. And the Islanders continue to set up with Blake, working it along for Hunter, but that pass didn't get through to York. Commodore stepped into Blake. And now Trent Hunter finds Blake. So does Hedekin with a body check, but Blake kept it. Hits Petman, center and feed along the goal line, and somehow stayed out. Ward, the goaltender, down, still scrambling just to get to his feet. And now the Hurricanes come back. This is Stahl challenging Ninema. And Di Pietro knocked that aside. Yeah, and Trent Hunter had the puck and tried. He's so patient and waiting and waiting to try and find someone with everyone scrambling around. Well, in a drive, and that hit his own man in front, Cullen. And now a few Hurricanes flat-footed, and the Islanders move up with Hunter leading the charge. York deflected it. Aaron Ward gets to it, and then Hunter leaned into him. Good clean hit there by Hunter. And it's kept in by York, but the Islanders need a change. And at 45 into the second period. Boy, there's no question who the best line for the Islanders has been. I and mean, none at all. Every time they're on the ice, something happens. 
not only do they get scoring chances, but you see Hunter with the check at the end of the shift. Finishes every check. Parrish works on Ward. Mark Parrish leaves it in the corner. And Steve Sterling said chemistry happened immediately. Lukowicz with a drive kicked out by Ward. And that shot came only as far as the defense, where it was knocked down by the leg of Cullen. But Steve was saying as far back as the early stages of training camp, he sensed something between York and Hunter. You can see some of that on display tonight. Now Brenda Moore hit by Lukowicz. Slapped back the other way by Campoli, and here comes Bates. In over the line, leaves it for wide handle. And neither one of them had a chance to shoot, neither one did. And Williams pestered by Kavasha. Winehandle joins the party, but didn't get the puck. And Norgren sandwiched between Nokalainen and Sopel. Well, there's Williams to keep the puck in for Carolina. Brindamore feeds the blue line. Tamardowski shot, and Di Pietro knocked down, grabs the puck. And Di Pietro a little slow to get up. And here's the chance in front. Now there you see Hunter, goaltender down, player in front. He's looking, looking, and then tries to set up York. And it was a good defensive play by Stahl. They just could not get the puck into the empty net. With the goaltender Ward scrambling around. Look at that puck right across the goal line. Neither player could reach it. York on one side, Hunter on the other. Ori Stillman lets one go, and that lands right in Di Pietro's catching glove. You like Rick's new pants, by the way? It's kind of a more brownish look. Got a different look to him, don't they? Di Pietro's continued to be sharp. Just prior to that last shot, getting bumped on the play, and still keeps his concentration, makes a good save. Rick was chirping this morning. The brownies are coming out tonight. Well, you know, he was he was chirping at the end of the first period, too, at his, at his teammates, and I don't blame him. He's a fiery guy, and, and they just had a, they really struggled that first period. And Di Pietro could see him at the end of the period as he was going off the ice on one occasion. Kind of giving it to his teammates to pick up the pace. That pass too far for Blake, and touched up for an icing by Hedekin. 322 gone in the period. Yeah, you know, Steve, Steve Sterling comes right back with this line. He put the fourth line out on the ice. And then the Kavasha line had, had one quick shift, and he comes right back with this line. And why not? Blake's been going tonight, and then Hunter and York, is, uh, as we've talked about, have had the good chemistry since the start of camp. Zagamanis, so Cullen, and Cole up front for Carolina. This is Mac Cullen, number eight, the former duck. The Zagamanis, and that one missed the net. Maybe got a piece of Sopel stick. Yep. And that's why they'll keep the face off inside the Islander zone. Yeah, good play by Sol Plan. I've talked to Rick DiPietro in the... Uh, let's take a look at this first. There's the, the work by Matt Cullen in front. They're able to get the puck out front. And then Sopel reacts immediately to the shot by Zygamanis and deflects it up and into the netting. But DiPietro is, tells his defenseman, you try and get the high shot because, you know, the change in the defense not being able to play real physical in front of the net. He wants his defenseman to try and take the high shot that comes from the point and allow him to take the lower shots. Hunter's pass went off the leg of Cullen. Zygamanis turns it back but gave it right up to York, who springs Hunter. And over the line, Hunter trying to get wide on Wesley. Put it right through the goal mouth. That deflected by Ward and it winds up in the crowd. Yeah, deflected is something I think we're going to see much more of this season because of, again, the lack of physical play around the front of the net. In fact, you go back to the Buffalo game the other night, of the six goals that Buffalo scored, one was an empty net. There was one bad goal that I'm sure Di Pietro would have liked to have had on, on rare, but the other four goals by Buffalo were all shots that were deflected at least once before they got to the net. Tommy Pettman throws one that way, took a carom on the other side. Brindamore is able to muscle it out of the zone. Nordgren under some pressure. Pettman worked him over. Yashin gets it back. Yashin trying to get away from Valin. Robert Nielsen tried to pry it in front of the net. Yashin helps out. Yashin put it through Shatan's legs, though. And back the other way come the Hurricanes with Nordgren feeding it right through the middle. Williams snaps one. That went off Pettman's leg. Williams keeps going. Put it through the slot all the way to the blue line. Ward's shot got through, but Di Pietro grabbed it through traffic. And there's no further play. And that was a high one that was grabbed by Di Pietro. Miro Chatan still, again, looking for his first goal as an Islander. 
And when you look at this Islanders, the way they were built, I mean, there's certainly enough talent on each of those three lines that they should be scoring goals. And four in a game against Buffalo is generally should be or could be enough to win. Mark Parrish fed the slot. No connection there, and Stahl heads back up for Carolina. He has the only goal so far. Eric Stahl, number 12, slaps one, and Di Pietro grabs that. Just to follow up one more time on the issue of the Islander jerseys being auctioned off as part of the NHL Cares program, just go to NHL.com for more information on how that auction is being affected. But that is something that every team in the NHL is doing with their game-worn jerseys from the first period of their first home game. Hopefully that will raise a lot of money to help a lot of people who sorely need it. Di Pietro's will. <laughs> it should. <laughs> a lot of saves in that jersey in the first period. Here's Kavasha trying to drive to the net. Kavasha keeps the puck and then whips it the other way. There's going to be a penalty to the Hurricanes here. And the Islanders are going to get a power play. Holding call. First, though, let's go downstairs and visit with Deb Kaufman. Deb? The very impressive 21 year old rookie goaltender who said his mom has been getting a lot of credit. It made the papers that she drove 40 hours from Edmonton to see his NHL debut last night. He said the truth is she was driving his car for him to Raleigh. She'd already arrived on Wednesday night. She enlisted the help of his aunt, her sister. I talk about a motherly love. They drove his car for him 40 hours. Then when they got word that he was going to play, his dad had the easy way out. He got to fly in to Raleigh, guys. Yeah, he flew along with the fiance and the sister they get to you know you know there's a nice two-hour flight or so maybe three here's a chance in front but Warren was able to stone Parrish you know who else is kind of a proud not Papa per se but in some ways is Brent Sutter his coach at Red Deer Shatan with a shot that deflects wide Brent multiple Stanley Cup winning Islander from the 1980s Islanders trying to keep it alive here. Yashin takes Ward down, and the Islanders keep it in. At the blue line, at Zitnik. He's got a good shot. Moving straight away, sets up Nielsen. He fires, and a kick save is made by Ward. And at nine to go on the Islander power play. Islanders keep it. Shatan or Zitnik, and now back. This is Nielsen. All the way through to Zitnik. Yashin works it deeper to Zitnik. And now it's Yashin again. Parrish looking for some room. Nielsen's at the hash mark. Jitnik the shot. It sailed wide. Big Karam Yashin finds Shatan. Almost flubbed it, but stays with it. Now Shatan fires. Save. Rebound loose. Ward is down. Nielsen trying to tee it up, but it was Nordgren prying it to the boards. And with a second effort, Nordgren gets it just to the line, but Shatan took it back. Now Jitnik, Shatan, a drive, and that one went wide. And Wesley goes to the backhand to clear with 17 to go on the power play. And that allows Carolina to change penalty killers. Shatan behind his own goal line. One more rush on this power play. Nero Shatan put it behind Blake. Sent it back in for Shatan. But well, that's whipped away by Williams, and out of the box comes Commodore. Islanders had three shots on that power play. Kevin Adams with York on him in the corner. Now Williams draped by Campoli. There's Campoli, number 14. The Islander rookie defenseman working in tandem with Blake to get the puck loose. And now Hunter starts the other way. Karam comes to the front of the net. Ward says, I'll handle it from there with 12.32 remaining in the second period. Curry and Island is getting a little more flow offensively. They have control most of that power play, but still have not solved young Cam Ward. Fourth line on with Asham getting a shot through. And Ward got a fast whistle there as that puck squirted loose, but the back referee, Mike Lego, couldn't see that from his angle, and that's why the whistle blew. Now it's a good save by Ward. Noka Linen was able to get a shot, and it looked like it deflected on the way to Ward. Noka Linen will come in right there with the shot, and deflects. Ward with one save, and then had trouble. You saw the loose puck. As the puck was next to escape, Ward was fishing around for it. And the whistle helped him out. This fourth line as a unit has already had more ice time than the fourth line did in Buffalo. Eric Goddard, the healthy scratch tonight, was dressed 
for the game on Wednesday night, but did not see it a shift. I like, I like what Steve Sterling's doing. I mean, this line has given them good shifts, you know, every time he's played them. So he just he keeps coming back with them. Right, here's Noka Linen, number 29, just 19 years old, sending Asham along. Asham for Ninema. Johnny Ninema just flicks it into the corner. Wide handle after it there. Lost it to Brett Hedekin. And Hedekin hit by Asham as the Islanders get it back. Lukowicz played it in. And now the Islanders recover. They've been outshot 23 to 12. And Yanni Ninema got it as far as the blue line. Parrish flicked it deep. Bates let it go for Kavasha. Put it right through the slot. Here comes Zitnik. Now for Parrish. Mark Parrish sent it out. Kavasha with a drive. Stopped by Ward. Off the scramble. Bates has to chase it all the way to the boards. Now for Zitnik. He lets it go. Crossbar. And that looked like it was deflected on the way by Parrish. Islanders keep it deep. Now Sopel lets one fly. He's... It is washed out. They're calling Parrish for interference. Parrish, you were right, Howie, deflected the one that hit the crossbar. And this last one tried to sneak in between the defenseman and the goaltender from the side of the net. And as he was coming in, he just bumped the goaltender Ward as the shot was being taken. As Ward got bumped, no the shot goal. went past him. There's the one that deflected off the crossbar. This line kept it up. Now Parrish is on one side. He'll end up on the other side. And as it comes from the point, you can see Parrish just bumped the goaltender. And the referee was right on top of the play. That was Mike Lego was right there. And he waves it off. The faceoff will come outside the blue line. Islanders have more jump. They look better here in the second period, though. But the game remains one to nothing. Carolina, not a penalty for interfering with a goaltender. And a faceoff coming up with 11.02 remaining in the second. Now it's a, well, you can see Parrish just try and get through. Watch him, he kind of lifts his leg. You can see the skate of the other defenseman there. But there's no question he bumped into the goaltender and, and Mike Lego made the right call. Now the Islanders bring it back in. This is Blake. Great by Wesley. Jason Blake keeping the puck. The backhander deflected by Wesley. Now you notice all those white jerseys? Again, this is the, the style that Peter Laviolette has his team playing. With the way the, the game is being called now, he wants five players back close to the net so that if someone does get beat, they can get help from someone who's very close, someone that's, that's in the area. You know what Peter said this morning? The best five minutes he spent in the morning were the five minutes he chatted with Mike Milbury. You know, I was there for that because I was talking to Peter when Mike walked up, and Mike walked up to him first and asked him how he was doing, how's the family, do you need anything while you're here, any way I can help you. I mean, no, they had a very pleasant, friendly conversation, very sincere conversation. Certainly no animosity left no. on Peter's part. And they both understand that this is business. All centers it. Wozniczek was tied up, and out comes Yashin. Three on three as Yashin gains the blue line. Two Hurricanes go to him. Ninema fails to control the puck. Now under pressure from Stahl. Help comes from Nielsen. And Robert Nielsen overskates the puck. And Valine has it back. Yanni Ninema finally received his sticks. It's the first time since last year that he's using his sticks. Islanders try to keep it in here. Lukowicz does. Shatan recovers and twists it wide. Nielsen steps into Valin. 9.42 to go in the second period. Arrow Shatan couldn't get it down the boards, but it caroms right back to Lukowicz. He put it off the skate of Wazicek with the Hurricanes changing. Campoli drives it around, and Ward cuts it off. Young Cam Ward, just 21 years old, very composed. He watches wine handle shoot one wide. And then Williams picks off a centering fee that was intended for Asham. Looks for Brindamore on left wing. Put it back to Williams. Maybe Di Pietro got his skate on that. Comes back in front. Oh, Di Pietro just robbed Norgren. 
Now at the blue line, it's Wesley playing it across. Devardovsky's shot didn't get through. Devardovsky again cranks and fires, and that hit the side of the net. Down the boards comes Devardovsky. And now the Hurricane starting to pressure. Brindamore put it off an Islander skate, and it comes right to Nokalainen. And he sends wide handle in on the right side. Slaps one, and Ward got a piece of it. Now Kavasha bumped by Tevardovsky. Wine handle follows. Brindamore without a stick for now. Sopel to Bates. Now to Sopel. One timer. Pan save. Rebound loose. Still loose. Wine handle chops at it. And Ward covers up. And some shoving, but not much more with 8.26 left in the second. Hockey's back. Welcome back, hockey. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. EA Sports. It's in the game. The team, as a team, have been better this period as we look at our Panasonic digital replay. And what a save that was again by Rick DiPietro on Nordgren. I mean, a beautiful save to keep this a one-goal game. Islanders about shot Carolina 11 to 8 in this period. Hurricanes 25 to 16 edge though overall. And now Hedekin comes to center. Islanders came close but had one whistled off. Zegamanis threw it across. Parrish has it. Parrish was not penalized for interfering with the goaltender because there was the incident in there. contact and some interference in the neutral zone oh, that, on that play. That's a terrible penalty by Carolina. I, I don't care whether it's today's rules, yesterday's rules, or way back in the early 1900s. That was, that was Commodore that just, I mean, I mean, the puck wasn't even close. Commodore just went over and knocked. Good hit. One small well done, detail. Yeah, no puck. You make a hit like that and the player doesn't have a puck, that's interference all the way. So the Islanders have some spark here in the second period. They still trail it by one. They go back on the power play. And they've got the York Blake Hunter line out there with a man advantage, which makes sense because they've been the most effective yeah, so far. Well, well, the last time the Islanders had a power play in this period, that line had just come off the ice. So they were tired, and so they didn't see any power play time. Williams took Blake's feet out from under him. But Blake continues with the Hurricane sending it all the way down. Di Pietro hands off to Sopel. Sopel and Campoli, the point men, as Campoli turns it in deep. Ward flings it all the way around, but not quite out. Kept alive by Hunter for Blake. Pressure from Adams and Williams of Carolina produces a bouncing puck that lands in the corner. Wesley finds Williams in his own zone, but Adams couldn't handle a very tough pass. Until the Hurricanes finally help him out by chipping it into the Islander end, and the Islanders change up halfway through the power play. This is Yashin going wide. Yashin all the way across to Sokol. Let's it go. Deflected Ward the save. Blake with a shot. He scores. Jason Blake on the power play. And the Islanders tie it at one. Going to the net. And then getting the shot on the net are the keys to this goal right here. Blake, who's had a good night along with his line mates, Sopel does a good job. Sopel had a very good shift. Sopel got it to the net with Blake going there. Ward made the save, and then Blake just finds it. Look at all the bodies there. Blake just finds it, pulls it over to the short side, and puts it in. And so a power play goal, and the Islanders have come back to tie it. So Blake with his second. Ashen made a long feed to Sopel to get that shot. And then Blake with a finish. And the Islanders, you could feel them coming over the last few minutes, getting closer and closer. Finally tie it up, and that really gets the crowd revved up. 
as the puck deflects into the seats. 6.43 remaining in the second period, and the Islanders finally solve Cam Ward. Yeah, well, what you would expect, with Carolina playing a very emotional game last night at home, their home opener, and winning 3-2 in a, in a shootout over Pittsburgh, flying last night, they got off to a good start. The Islanders were tight to start the game, so the Islanders are kind of picking up the pace of their game, and Carolina's pace has diminished somewhat. And a bad penalty is what set up the power play. Commodore with that interference penalty in the neutral zone. Here's Yashin charging to the net. And Ward got a piece of that backhander from right in close. Yashin again. Oh, and Ward with a big kick save to Rob Yashin. That was a good, quick shot by Alexi Yashin. And oh, did Ward ever throw that left skate out in a hurry? What a save. What a save he made. His, his first save in his first start last night was against Mario Lemieux. Ward showed up in camp a couple of years ago and was very impressive. And Yashin, excellent shift to follow the assist he made on the play. Here it is again. Look at that left pad save. Beautiful, beautiful save by Ward. And then that one there also on Yashin. Ward got his right arm on that one. Well, uh, Yashin, we mentioned the good pass that he made to Sokol to initiate the play which led to the goal. It won't get him an assist because Parrish was in on the scramble too. Parrish gets the second assist. Sokol and Parrish assisting on Blake's second at 13.01. And Peter Laviolette, not liking the trend, has called a timeout. And so that'll give us a chance to look at our Nissan trivia question for tonight. As Peter Bark's instructions to his Hurricanes. Peter strategically took a timeout a little earlier last night uh, as well, but before Chris Campoli, who scored on opening night in Buffalo, think about the last Islander to score in his National Hockey League debut. Chew on that. We'll give you the answer in a little bit. Now, Peter Laviolette used his timeout last night about three minutes into the third period with his team leading 2-0. Didn't like the way things were going, and the Islanders have turned this game around. They've taken control. They've been the better team in this second period. Islanders have the fourth line out again. Noka Linen's line with Winehandel and Asham, and here's Winehandel. Winehandel curling in the corner. A drive by Sokol was blocked as that hit Zygomanis. And the Islanders' defensemen are open. Winehandel couldn't control that, but still flicked it deep. Noka line and turns Wesley around. Nothing called there, and here's Winehandle for Noka line. Petri Noka line to the blue line. And now Sopel across. Jetnik a drive, knocked away in front. That one did not reach the goaltender. And Zygamanis heads up ice. And the Islanders have had the puck in their possession more and more as this period evolves. Asham challenging, and Ward denies him. No, it was interesting on that play. As soon as Carolina dumped the puck in, Matthias Weinhandel stopped and headed outside the red line. And as soon as DiPietro got the puck, he looked up and gave him the long feed. That led to the Asham chance. There's a turnover. Adams plays it across. Brenda Moore stopped by DiPietro. Good stick saved by Ricky, who hasn't been tested much the last few minutes. And the Hurricanes failed to keep it in there. So Hedekin, under some pressure from Parrish, moved it quickly. Adams has to wait for Brindamore to get on side before sending it in, taking a bump from Bates. And back on the puck is Brad Lukowicz for Sokol. That goes off the boards and off of Adams as well. That comes out of the Islanders' zone. Desi Bouleris, number 36. An energy forward that Peter Laviolette looks to to change the tempo a bit for his team. As he did last night, he hit Parrish there along the boards. And now Hedekin back at his own line for Carolina. 4.20 to go, second period. A one-to-one -one game. Stall in the first, Blake in the second. That's your scoring. Icing waved off. Lukowicz back to get it. Wozicek in on Petman on the four check. Stall got it loose. Wozicek looks hurt, though. Wrist or shoulder. He heads to the bench. Ward unable to get it deep. Islanders look to break out. Hunter couldn't relax that bouncing puck. He had York with him. And with the Islanders finishing a change, Stillman touch feeds to Stahl. Back for Stillman at his feet. He gets help from Ward at the blue line. Stillman, a nice pass to Valin. But the shot knocked away. Good play by a sliding Trent Hunter. And the puck stays along the boards. Stahl for Williams. They lock up with each other, so they're trapped deep. Three on two for the Islanders. Hunter carries in. Cross ice York, but he shanked it. And now Stillman looks to attack the other way. The long feed for Stahl. In over the line. He sets 
up the slot. Molina shot, and that deflected wide. Stillman on the other side looks for some room. Corey Stillman feeds the blue line. Temerdovsky with a shot, and that deflects into the corner. Now it's Williams to Pauline, and his shot got through. D.P. Entra made a save. Williams recovers. Williams under some pressure here. Still moves it down the boards. Temerdovsky is stopped by Rick DiPietro as he throws out the right glove with 2.56 left in the second. The FSN Pro Football Preview. You've got questions. Our guys have the answers. Get a first-hand look at the weekend's biggest matchups. Oh, Join Chris Myers, Jay Glazer, Tim Brown, and Jason Seahorn as they take you into the trenches with interviews and in-depth analysis. Finally, they seem to have a defense that can back them up. It's the weekly preview show that can't be missed. The Six remaining in the second period. Well, Wazicek looks to be all right. At one point, it looked like his wrist or his shoulder was bothering him. He was very slow on the far corner in the Carolina bench. So uh, he's all right. From the draw, the Hurricanes control. Temerdovsky, a wrist shot, and that's blockered away by Di Pietro. And Miroslav Shatan relaxes the puck as he carries in. He pulls up. Sends it back to Zitnik, and that one flutters through to Ward, who grabs it chest high. Steve Sterling has made a change. Ashum, who's had a good start to this game, has now been moved up a couple of notches. He's on the line now with Shatan and Yashin. And the, the rookie Nielsen has been moved down. Now Steve Sterling was saying Nielsen just had too many giveaways in the game against Buffalo. He loves to pass the puck and make plays, but at times you have to recognize just the time to get rid of it. 227 remaining in the second as the puck sent in behind the Carolina net. Around to the near side, Bates with a good hit on Nordgren. John Bates just curls it back in deep. And then Nordgren reverses. Sopel pinched. He and Brindamore tied each other up. Williams and Parrish do the same at the Carolina line, and a Commodore for Carolina just slides it in behind the Islander goal. The Pietro for Zitnik. Hurricanes changing. Hard lead for Winehandle. In over the line. Now to Bates. Down low. And it's taken away by Valine. This time Brindamore got a stick tied up in the equipment of Mark Parrish. Corey Stillman into the Islander zone, surrounded, keeps the puck, good play there by Stillman, now he throws one in front, that deflects off of Petten and comes back in front, and this is Parrish lifting it along for York. Mike York working with Hunter, gains the Carolina zone, Hunter will look for it on the other side with Ward bumping him, Jason Blake who has the Islander goal, finds Hunter, not Trent Hunter, number seven, bothered by Ward. Was a check tying up York, bidding him to the boards. Releases just in time, but York keeps the puck. Out to Yanni Ninema. He floats it through the slot. Too many legs to get through, though. And Stillman starts back ahead as we reach the final minute of the second period. Quick turnaround. Hunter for Blake. Looks for York. He's in. Oh, and he just missed the net. Now Hunter. Double team turned it over to Ward, who chips one along for Stahl. Now to Stillman on right wing. Corey Stillman feeds Stahl in the corner, tried to put it back in front. That's broken up, and here's Blake for the Islanders, hitting up ice for Hunter on right wing. Blake charges towards the net. Hunter a drive, and that one went wide. Yashin keeps it alive along the boards for Blake. Tied up by Tevardovsky, 28 seconds to go in the period. Islanders keep it. Yashin to Shatan. He fanned, but Lukowicz followed, put it off a stick, loose in front. And poked just wide by Shatan. Taken out in front by Cullen, but Asham got it loose from him. Loose in front. It goes off the glove of Ward. Remains loose. Asham trying to tee it up. Loses it. And Cullen races ahead. Seven seconds left in the period. And Cullen just twists it behind the Islander goal. And Di Pietro swings it around the boards as time runs out. And the Islanders get better and better as the 
the second period evolved. It was the reversal of period number one where the Islanders came out, had their legs in the second period. They did not have them in the first. They played with all kinds of spunk and energy, led by the line with Blake on, on one side and Hunter. And they, they just, they really got their forecheck going. They were making smart plays, and they created an awful lot of offense and forced Cam Ward, the young goaltender for Carolina, to come up big on a number of occasions. Islanders outshot Carolina 16 to 13 for the period. So that's 30 to 21 in terms of shots. A lot of shots, a lot of chances, but just two goals. That means the goaltending's been good too. Deb Kaufman coming up next. It's about intensity. It's about excitement. It's about action. And it's about time you became a part of it all. The New York Islanders are back, and they're better than ever. With a potent mix of seasoned vets and hungry, fresh faces, the Islanders are poised to take the new NHL by storm. Full and partial season ticket packages available. For tickets, call 1-800-882-ISLES or visit us at www.NewYorkIslanders.com. Hockey is back, and the New York Islanders are ready for action. Are you? Hi, can you tell me, how are the rooms... Some hockey's back. Welcome back, hockey. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. EA Sports. It's in the game. At the intermission and almost had your first goal in that period, but just a different team that came out in the second. What was the difference from the first? Well, first period, we didn't do anything we wanted. Not not one thing. Uh, we came in and uh, adjusted. And, you know, a lot of nerves out there. It's been a long time since playing from the fans. So uh, we adjusted and came out and played our game. We have uh, pucks in deep, uh, worked hard, and, you know, as you see, it's, uh, it's going to take ugly goals. And then you assisted on the Jason Blake goal, which got you guys even in the game. It just seemed like you were spending a lot of time in front of Cam Ward. Yeah, you know what? Guys are getting in the front of that. We're just trying to get pucks there. Like I said, it's going to take an ugly one. And that was, uh, that was a rebound. He kicks out a lot of them, so we have to be there ready for bagging them in. I want you to know as a reporter, I'm not offended by the competition, but we've gotten some competition from the Islander players who have been blogging. Uh, you know, you know, at this game, your only your career only lasts for so long. So you got to, got to, you know, look at every angle. By the time the career is over, you still got a lot of years left to support the family. So uh, maybe that'll be one way. Did you think of the name Soap Dish, or did somebody else? Uh, it's been, uh, been, <laughs> it's been, you know, my name for uh, many years. So uh, somebody's not smart enough. Thank you, Brent. You're All right, Brent Soap and the Islanders have tied it up. It's one-one after two. A quick break, and we'll continue with more at the intermission right after this. It's 1-1 after 2 as we get ready for the third period here on opening night at the Coliseum. A limited number of seats are still available for one of the greatest rivalries in all of sports. It's Islanders-Rangers, so come watch the Islanders Thursday, October 20th at 7 o'clock. Tickets are available at the Coliseum box office, Ticketmaster.com, where you can charge by phone. It's been a long time since we've read this number, 631-888-9000. So it's the Islanders in their home opener against former Islander coach Peter Laviolette in the Carolina Hurricanes. And the one thing that did happen to Peter Laviolette in the year after he was coaching the Islanders before he got the Hurricanes job, he spent some time with Team USA and that has led to his appointment as the Olympic coach for Team USA. So he will be behind the bench when the United States opens against Latvia. He already knows the opening game in February in Turin, Italy. We talked to him before the face-off tonight about being the head coach and naming the new team. You know, we had, we had a camp out there in August, which some of the Islanders were at. Um, Perry was out there, and Ricky was out there, and um, you know, we, we we tried to force feed as much as we could in three days. We won't see them again until February 14th, when we have one practice, and then we open up against Latvia. So, um, you know, right now it's really on the back burner. There's not a lot um, that can happen with the Olympic team. We've got uh, people, you know, Donnie Waddell and Paul Holmgren and Jimmy Johansson from USA Hockey. They're all out watching the players. Ultimately, I. A lot of people thought that Wayne Gretzky would not take the coaching job in Phoenix because he is heavily involved in Team Canada as they will get ready to play in the Olympic Games. But he was uh, willing to take on both responsibilities in La Violette. We'll have his hands full as well as the head coach in February, but obviously not thinking about it too much. One thing he was saying, I asked him if guys were extra nice to him around the league when he sees them this year if they want to get a spot on the team. He said he didn't think so. Have a good day.
any goals yet, but the pace has been outstanding through two periods as the Islanders and Carolina tied at one. Hurricanes led one to nothing going into the second, and the Islanders gradually, Joe, seemed to take the play away. Well, they just, they were skating, and they were really on top of the play, and they created scoring chances by moving the puck, by getting it in forechecking, getting the puck to the net. When that, this line with Hunter and, and York uh, and Blake has just been just tremendous tonight. There's a shot that went off the crossbar that was deflected by Parrish, and then this one ends up in the net, but was a, a no goal because Parrish bumped into the goaltender Ward, so that did not count. But the Islanders eventually ended up going on the power play, as there's the explanation being given to both Mark Parrish and Alexi Ashen as to why the goal did not count. And then when the Islanders went back on the power play, Yashin with the long pass, Sokol gets the shot through, and Blake just wouldn't give up. See how he stopped, went back to the puck, gathered it in, and then beat the goaltender Ward on the short side. 30 to 22 in shots for Carolina, and a whole lot of scoring chances. Di Pietro and Ward have been strong. The third period is coming right up. He is brought to you in part by Cablevision. Get the most New York sports in HD on I.O. Digital Cable Service from Cablevision. And by Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. A one-to-one -one game as we head to the third period. Now, soccer fans, tonight on MSG Network, the Metro Stars continue their playoff push as they take on D.C. United. Catch the action tonight at 10.30 on MSG. Well, sitting up high there, the man second from the right is the president and general manager of Carolina. That's Jimmy Rutherford. Remember Jeff O'Neill spent his entire career there. A great player. Well, this summer, Jeff O'Neill's brother, Donnie, died in a car accident. They're from the Toronto area. And their father, Paul, called up Jimmy Rutherford and said, could you, could you trade Jeff to Toronto? Could you get him back here close to the family? He kind of wanted to go to Toronto anyway. And, and Jimmy Rutherford said, yeah, based on that, he traded him. He gave him to Toronto for a fourth-round draft pick. And Jeff O'Neill is still a very, very good hockey player, but because of what happened to the family, Jimmy Rutherford just decided this is this is the best thing to do. This is the, the right thing to do, and uh, moved him to Toronto. Nice. Quite the thing to do, isn't it? Well, nice move on the part of Jim Rutherford, and you know there are always salary concerns now with the cap and all, and. Jeff O'Neill still makes pretty nice money, but the Maple Leafs had plenty of those guys. And so for Rutherford to be able to affect the deal with Toronto, just on the Toronto end alone was pretty impressive. Here's Nielsen, pinned by Tevardovsky. Robert Nielsen put it right through the goal mouth. Nielsen's back on that line. He was taken off at the end of the second period in favor of Asher. One-to-one uh, -one game, plenty of shots, plenty of chances, and only three penalties taken by each team. And even with the relative paucity of power plays compared to what we've seen the first couple of nights. This game looks completely different from a one-to-one -one game these teams would have played last season. Just what everybody wanted. Wazicek challenged in the corner by Petnin. Joseph Wazicek to stall, and that shot blocked at the defense. Oh, a very effective play there to prevent a further scoring chance by Yanni Ninema, who got in front of that shot. Now Wazicek loose behind the net. Mazicek muscles his way into the corner before giving it to Stahl, who hits the side of the net. Ninema doing all he can, and finally too much on Corey Stillman. Ninema will get a penalty as Ward heads to the bench. Extra skater for Carolina. Mazicek to Cullen, who came off the bench. And now Hedekin turns it over, and we get the whistle, but Yanni Ninema just went too far, and the Islanders will be down a man. Now, the big players with speed and that can handle the puck are very difficult to defend, and with Wasicek on the ice, I mean, he was just kind of wearing everybody out. And even though that wasn't Wasicek, that was Cullen that got uh, taken down there. Or pardon me, it was uh, Stillman that got taken down there. The Islanders, I think as a group, just got tired in their own zone. And eventually, Ninema, who had been out there a long time, takes Stillman down, and, and they're calling any of those types of plays around the net. And so Ninema, you can still see him breathing hard. And so he's he's in the box. Di Pietro getting a skate worked on at the Islander bench. 
Scott Boone did the honors, and Rick DiPietro is ready. Remember the other night when we thought DiPietro might have been hurt when he slid across the goal mouth in Buffalo? Well, it was what we suspected also, that he might be just trying to settle things down. And he had the officials right there with him, but good job by Ricky to sell the stoppage. And uh, right there, the old sharpen the skate at. And I'm sure he needed it. But in any event, the Hurricanes <laughs> go to the power play. Here's Cullen firing and a quick pad saved by Di Pietro before it's cleared by Bates. You know, a goaltender, it's very hard, right, for a goaltender to be a leader, if not the leader on a team. But Di Pietro is showing an awful lot of that leadership quality at a very young age. No, he's a fiery, he's a fiery competitor. I mean, he'll do anything to win. Hurricane setting up the power play. Cole lost it to Bates. And Bates gets rid of it, and the Islanders will change up. 45 gone to the power play already. Islanders have Pettinen back with Sopo, Asham, and Blake up front. Wazicek steers it all the way around past Di Pietro. Held in by Cullen to Tevardovsky, but Asham got in the way of that. And now Sopo lugs it out, trying to get away from Wazicek. Turned it over, and Wazicek heads up the other way. Wazicek in over the line. Now to Tevardovsky. Fake the shot, gave it to Stoll, stripped by Blake. And Jason Blake hounds Tevardovsky. Stays with him, took him down. But play continues. 43 to go on the Carolina power play. Stall bursting into the zone, slowed down by Pettinen. Islanders don't clear. Stillman shot, pad save, two saves, and Di Pietro holds on. And while all that was going on, Peter Laviolette screaming at the referee, Kerry Frazier, that there should have been a call on Blake down at the other end. And Di Pietro makes three good saves in a row. But Laviolette still giving it to Kerry Frazier. It should be a penalty. To, why isn't there a penalty? So this is this is Stahl. Boy, he's a good-looking young player, isn't he? Big and can skate. Scored the only Carolina goal in this game. He can make things happen. Fast, quick Carolina team with the faceoff coming up inside the Islanders zone, and it's drawn right to the line. Held in by Hedekin. 28 to go to the power play. Hedekin can't locate it. Finally does, and it's Commodore feeding Stillman. Now Williams snaps one off a leg. Keeps going after it. He bumped with Shitnik. York there as well for the Islanders. And Mike York, who's played very well tonight, helping out on the penalty kill, gets rid of the puck. Six seconds left to the power play. Williams for Stillman. Back again now to Stillman. Di Pietro took the angle away. And Ninim is out of the box, and the Islanders kill the time. A good play by Ward, the goaltender, to move the puck up the ice quickly and catch the Islanders in a player change. Islanders strip it away. Hunter now for wine handle. See his wine handle peels off and fires off the blocker of Cam Ward. 3.45 gone in the third of a one-to-one -one game. And this one will be an icing as Sopel comes back to touch up. Matias Weinhandel looks better in this game. This last week he had laser surgery. You know that damaged eye that he's got. Every year he's got to get laser surgery to clean it out. And this, and this time, what ended up happening is Dr. Zagelbaum, who did the surgery, had to, had to give him over 250 hits of, of the laser, which is, and generally, someone with his type of problem, they get about 100 hits. He said when he got in there and looked at the eye, he said the eye was, it was thick. It was like cheese that they had to laser to get all that out of there because he was seeing just shadows as of last week and had to clear all that up so he had some better vision. Every year he's got to do that. Yeah, huh? yeah, but this time it was it was uh, there was a tremendous buildup. Suffered that injury playing over in Europe before ever joining the Islanders. And there was some concern he might never play in the NHL because of that eye injury. The player who hurt him, I think, was suspended for life, wasn't he? In that league, if I remember right. In that league for life, and I think he's I, I think he's a member of the Toronto Toronto Maple Leafs organization. Offside go the Hurricanes with 427 gone you know, in the, the third. The best his eye is is 2100 is the vision in that in that bad eye. That's when he gets it cleaned out. Aaron Asham in his first game seeing more and more responsibility yeah. and more and more ice time. He's played he's played well. He was going crazy the last couple of weeks <laughs> trying to get in the lineup. Wanted to play in the opener on Wednesday and Steve Sterling elected to give him a few more days. 
Wide handle driving on Ward. Turned around. Good play there by veteran defenseman Aaron Ward. But the Islanders keep the punt. This is the fourth line buzzing here. Wide handle turning. Noka line and helping. This is Noka line in number 29. Around to the other side. Asham tried to wrap it around. And the goaltender Ward got a piece of that. And now the long feed to Cullen with Pettinen back. Pettinen stick checking Cullen with a backhander. And Di Pietro had to stop that. And now Winehandle leaning in, but Cole got to it first. Lewandowski works it back in behind the net for Cullen. Cullen looking for a man in front, finds Cole, hopped over his stick. Wesley a drive, and that's grabbed by Di Pietro. Oh, you, you mentioned Ward making the defensive play. Ward was anticipating that this league was going to change in the way they played. And so what he did is he, he is 15 pounds lighter now than he was a couple of years ago because he, he just felt that he was going to need more quickness with the way the game was going to be called and more stamina, and he's got both. Made a good play on that defensive play. Now Chatan for the Islanders springs Nielsen up to the Carolina line. Robert Nielsen whips it across for Chatan. Fires towards the net, deflected, and goes in! Demardowski knocked it in, Howie. The save was made by Ward from a bad angle. The puck came up in the air, and Demardowski with his stick tried to play it as the puck was in the air. Hit it once, and then tried to hit it one more time before it went in the net. Here it comes. There's the shot. There's Tevardoski, and then he tries to reach one more time. He just knocked it past his own goaltender. There it is. Off his blade, and then tries to, as it's floating slowly towards the net, which is an awful feeling. He was swiping at it, trying to get it away from the net. He did not, and the Islanders take the lead. Just the way Miroslav Shatan visualized it <laughs> after signing with the Islanders. Just the wide pass and see where it goes you never know what will happen if you throw it at the net uh, the Islanders get the lead and that's the first time in the first two games of this season that they have been in front six minutes gone in the third two to one New York here's Stillman firing at Di Pietro stop that well, sure had a good look at it but Stillman dead on and Di Pietro is just too quick for him Islanders come back the other way. York for Blake. Jason Blake to Hunter. And that one is eaten up by Wazicek as Hunter was knocked down. Answers gets the arm up on uh, the defenseman Mike Commodore. And Mike Lego spots a penalty with 13.35 left. I think everyone thought it was Hunter. I but did. So did I. But York is the man whistled off, so Carolina trailing by a goal has another chance in the power play, and they have yet to score a power play goal this year. 0 for 14, I believe. Well, let's see. Hunter wears 7. York is 16. 1 and 6 is 7. So maybe that's what Lego was doing. He was far, far away when he called that penalty was Mike Lego. Cullen stripped of the puck, and on comes Kavasha. Let's one go, and he missed the net. Comes hard around, right to the stick of Stahl. And he sends Stillman on his way. Corey Stillman turned it over. Kavasha took it away, and now sends Bates up the left wing. Kavasha heading towards the net. Bates carries up. Bates with a shot. He scores! He tries to wait, wait, he'll give it up right there. Now watch Bates with the, Bates is thinking of passing here, and then just shows a lot of patience. Waits, waits, and then that quick wrist shot just inside the post. What a goal by Bates. He had Kabasha on the other side. He looked a couple of times to see if he could get the pass through, and very wisely elected to hold on to the puck. And eventually, Tevardoski, the defenseman, slid down to try and block it, but Bates again waited for him to slide by and then took the shot. Huge goal. Islanders up by two. And Ola Kavasha, who struggled throughout most of the first couple of periods, made a nice play to chip that puck loose. And uh, Bates, with the Islanders' first shorthanded goal of the year, gets it a minute and 27 after Chatan had 
giving the Islanders the lead, and then DiPietro called on to make two saves as Brindamore denied right on the doorstep. And DiPietro continues to come up huge in this game. That's 40 shots now for the Hurricanes. Now DiPietro told me, he said, with these smaller gloves, it's more difficult to catch the puck. And you saw there that high shot. He tried to catch it. There was a rebound. Then he had to make a very good save on Brindamore on the rebound. 39 seconds left to the Carolina power play. DiPietro tried to glove that puck, had it deflect away, and almost dropped into the net behind him. That hit the top of the net as well. Now Bates with a shorthanded goal. He's got 54 goals in his career, and 12 of them have been shorthanded. Now, what a turnaround this game has been. Now, Carolina has 40 shots on goal, and here it is again. You're right, Howie. Good job by Kabasha coming from behind to dislodge the puck. And there's Bates. He keeps looking, 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 waits for the defenseman Tepardowski to slide by, and then the quick wrist shot. Good shot by Bates. And they get 3-1. Kabasha should get an assist thus far. Giving it to Bates unassisted, and it was Kabasha that made the play. Oh, you were right on top of that. Here it is again. Now watch from behind. You'll see a stick come in. That was Kabasha. Good job by Kabasha, as Stillman didn't see him coming from behind. He should get an assist on this, but as of right now, doesn't. And then Bates does the rest of the work. So three to one, New York. Ten seconds left on the power play with 11:42 to go in the third period. Williams behind the net. Feeds out to the circle where Hedekin fires it wide. Bates and Commodore came together hard, but York's out of the box. Penalty over. Adam slides it across, and Di Pietro somehow stopped that. And back up the right wing comes Blake before dumping it in, and the Islanders change up. 41 to 26, Carolina in shots. And of those 41, you got to figure at least half of them have been from, what would you say, 15 feet or closer to Di Pietro? Yeah. Uh, in particular, that first period, Di Pietro stopped a lot of those close in shots. And that last one, I'm not sure if he got a pad on it or if it just hit somebody, but that looked like a freebie for Carolina. Islanders moving back. Was, it was, you know, he was wide open. And Poli fires. Ward kicks that out. And Sokol twists it around the board. 40 saves tonight for Rick Di Pietro. Third time in his career that's happened. The way the game is looking this year, it'll happen a lot more. Uh, that's going to be a penalty. That's a penalty on Cole. I mean, the fans recognized it. Harry Frazier was the back referee that made the call. And the reason he made the call is Cole took the feet out from Campoli, knocked him down, and that created a scoring chance. As soon as he got to the puck, Harry Frazier made it. There it is right there. Takes his feet out, and then as Cole retrieves the puck, Calls the, makes the call. Here's the one that looked like almost a sure goal. Oh, what a play by Lukowicz. Lukowicz with the stick. Boy, that net was wide open on the other side. Lukowicz with the little deflection of the puck prevented a goal. And now the Islanders go to the power play. Cole off for interference. Islanders fourth power play. And now Parrish leans into Ward. Parrish, Yashin, Shatan along with Zitnik and Sopel on defense. Now this is where the Islander forwards have to be very alert. Carolina trailing by two goals with 10 minutes to go in the game. If they get a chance shorthanded, those defensemen on Carolina will move up on the play to try and score a shorthanded goal. So the Islanders forwards on the ice have to watch for that. Evan Adams with Williams. Williams. skates momentarily got taken in by Sopel who had made the giveaway Sopel got it loose and Di Pietro laid it crisply to the stick of Blake but not just 28 seconds remain on the Islander power play nine minutes left in the third Islanders with a three to one lead Hedekin and York bump and some room for the Hurricanes here Gavin Adams for Valin. Nicholas Valin going wide. Di Pietro down. Valin tried to bank it off of him. And then Di Pietro hit. Takes quite a tumble. And now Adams immediately attended to by Campoli. Campoli now roughed up by Williams. And then Blake flies to the defense of Campoli. Now Di Pietro was bumped into by Adams. 
And that's why Campoli went after him. Let's see how all this turns out. But Campoli was the first one to react. I'm not sure if there was going to be a penalty called on the contact with Di Pietro. I kind of think there was. Out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw the referee raise a hand, and then Campoli jumped in. So I'm suspecting that this will all be evened out. Bates, Bates goes into the box as he was another player that jumped in and got involved with after Campoli was the first player, Bates was the second. Here's the play in front. There's the collision, which looked to me to be accidental, but Campoli, who reacted right away, obviously felt it wasn't. And then Bates jumped in there as well. Let's see again. There wasn't, there wasn't much. I think Di Pietro helped it a little bit. I'll tell you what, though, the message was certainly delivered the other night when Rick DiPietro had to stand up for Campoli, and the team got together. You talked about it before. They discussed it. They said that couldn't happen again, and here DiPietro gets hit, and several players wind up coming to Rick's defense. Hope you heard our pregame show tonight because Brad Lukowicz addressed just how important an issue that was. Well, they addressed it after the second period of the Buffalo game. Now, this is this is interesting. I heard Larry Robertson talking last night, the coach of the Devils, talking about the fact that the Flyers were running into Marty Brodeur quite often in that game last night. And with the new rules where the defensemen aren't allowed to be as physical in front of the net, I think you're going to see a lot more collisions with these big forwards go, you know, charging to the net to try and score, and the defensemen not able to quite do as much as they've been able to do in the past. Goalies will be campaigning for much more equipment in a hurry. <laughs> you know those restrictions? <laughs> now we really need them. Here's Aaron Asham. Asham going wide, throwing it across. Pettman shot juggled by Ward. Mark Parrish trying to get it loose. Bates and Adams got the penalties for roughing at 11-21, so the team's still playing at full strength. 8-19 to go in the third. Gavasho launches one. Parrish the deflection. He took that out of midair. Good save. And now it's Asham drawing company. Good idea for Pettman. Didn't connect cleanly. Pettman follows along, and then Parrish is bumped hard by Wesley. Squirts loose. And it's Zygamanis throwing it up the middle. Now for Cole, driving to the net, but he lost the handle. Eric Cole had a burst of speed, but lost the puck. I don't think he's at 100%. He was hurt a couple of times in last night's game, and he's got tremendous speed. He's a fearless player. He just hasn't been as effective in this game as he had been in the preseason in the first two games. Commodore in the corner. Trying to get away from the first wine handle, and then Yashin. Lukowicz puts a hit on Stillman, allowing Shatan to fire it around the boards. And the Hurricanes send it out to center, but Shatan gloved it down. Joseph Fazacek. All the way down, icing waved off because that was an intended pass. Down to seven minutes remaining in the third period. Lukowicz steps into Stahl a couple of times. Stahl emerges with a puck. Lukowicz stays with him, though. Stillman working along the boards in the corner with Yashin. Ward held it in, but didn't have clean control of it. Shot it off Yashin's leg. Yashin for Shatan. Back to Yashin. And now Shatan. Stripped of the puck by Hedekin. Weinhandel waiting for him. Good work there by Weinhandel. Anticipating Hedekin coming right towards him with the puck. And time becoming a real issue for the Hurricanes now with 6.22 to go in the third period. Good idea there with the Hurricanes changing. Just put it right at their feet and it's going to draw the penalty. And the Islanders are going to get the power play here. Or is that not? Looks like a slash when we get back. Most people want to get in better shape. It's a slash right there. Eric Stahl on the right arm. Or Sopel. And so the Islanders back on the power play. With 6.09 to go in the third, so the Hurricanes have to attack while shorthanded. Islanders special teams tonight have produced a power play goal and a shorthanded goal. And right now, Alexei Zitnik handles the puck in the New York zone. Blake 
for Hunter. York in front of the net. Sopel the other defenseman. Sopel cruises in to put it behind the goal line. Wesley working on York. Hunter got it back to Sopel, who took the slash that drew the penalty. Jitnik put it over Sopel's stick, and it just came over the line, brought back in to laid offside. White as the Hurricanes clear out. Quick pass to Blake. York goes to the net. And as soon as he takes the puck, he's hit by Hedekin. Still finds Jitnik at one point. Goes to the other to Sopel. Around call. Down low. Wrap around. Stopped by Ward. And he holds on. As Blake was batting away. And York was there. And 58 seconds remain to the penalty. But the Islanders getting some chances. Now you'll see Blake on the left side. Right here. He'll, he'll get it. Watch him try and stuff it in. And then he just keeps going after the loose puck. He gets knocked out of the way. And the young goaltender Ward gets help from the rest of his teammates. Hines been good tonight, haven't they? Right from the opening faceoff. Yeah, the Islanders struggled most of that first period, but York, Hunter, and Blake were the ones who really had the legs going. You know, and it's important to stay away from penalties because Steve Sterling loves the fact that that uh, Hunter up front is such a good penalty killer. So is uh, so is Blake, and he doesn't want to use him in that role if he didn't if he doesn't have to. Alexi Ashen plays it down low. Parrish was bumped a couple of times by Commodore. Got it to the blue line. Campoli to Ninema. Shatan takes it back. Half minute to the power play. Islanders in no hurry with a two-goal lead. Shatan, Yashin, stopped by Ward and played back to the line. Ninema fires. That's blocked before it can get to the net. Shatan grabs it again, though. 20 seconds to the power play. And now Adams finds a couple of orange-shirted Islanders around him. But he got some help, and it's sent out of the zone, and Ninema grabs it back. Final 10 to the power play, 4.25 remaining in the third period. And now Yashin carries in. Holds up on Brindamore. Kavasha curled. Nice feed. Ninema shot. Stopped by Ward. And a lot of traffic in front. And good work by Ashen to get back. Keep it in. Kavasha to Ninema. That was blocked by Commodore. And the Hurricanes finally come out. Nordgren checked by Kavasha, getting back well. Brindamore and Wesley essentially shoved into each other. Good play by Bates. And here's a two-on-one developing. Jitnik sending Ashen in. Back for Jitnik in deep. And Ward took it away. And then the collision forces the net off of its moorings with 3.41 to go in the third. I've been in this room before. What? I've been here before. Uh, yeah. You took the virtual tour at Hotels.com? Right. Want to check out your hotel before you check in? Send in the experts at Hotels.com. They check out thousands of hotels and bring you tools like virtual tours so you can look before you book. Log on or call now to find great deals everywhere. Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Go! Some hockey's back. Welcome back, hockey. Rated E10 for ages 10 and up. EA Sports. It's in the game. Have a good day. <laughs> See you tonight. Okay. Introducing the all-new Suzuki Grand Vitara. You want more out of life? We're giving you the green light. Go! Well, 
Monday on FSN New York, the Islanders will face the Florida Panthers here at the Coliseum. Geico Islanders game night leads off at 1230. You'll want to make sure to watch that. We'll have a feature on Alexi Asher, the new Islanders captain. Stan Fischler will make his Islanders season debut on Monday. And then the puck drops at 1 o'clock. That's Monday on FSN New York, available in HD only on cable. And that's Stan's first appearance as an Islander contributor on the show. He's not skating for the Islanders Monday. Well, here's the Islanders on that last chance. Now, Asham was at the end of the shift. The puck was bouncing and rolling a little bit, which slowed him down somewhat. And so then he elected to just give the puck back to Zitnik, who started the play in his own zone. And Zitnik able to get a shot, but Ward able to make a save. The young Sidney Crosby has his first National Hockey League goal tonight. Pittsburgh leading Boston 6-4 to four at the end of two. Tampa Bay leading Florida 1-0 at the end of two. First goal allowed by the Panthers in two games. It's their third of the year. Jacques Martin, the new coach down in Florida. Very good defensive coach. Hit next shot slapped away by Tevardovsky. We'll see them on Monday. Not, just told you. not meaning that he's necessarily a defensive coach, but knows that side of the game extremely well. Stall, he play onside, bumped by Zitnik. He put it off of Wazicek with good coverage, though, as Hunter was right there. And it's back out in center. Jordan's made a lot of changes, haven't they? Gary Roberts, Joe Neuendijk, a couple of veterans there. They've got some good young players. Bo Meester, Roberto Luongo. It's a good team. Yeah, Roberts and Neuendijk, not only veterans, but winners. Yeah. As we have some hardware, and that's what Mike Keenan, the general manager, wanted to import to change the culture up a little bit. Asham knocked down. Uh, gets right back up with Commodore all over him. Asham working strong. Boy, has he been a spark plug in this game. And now uh, Yashin looking wrap around. Instead feeds Ninema and a pants save by Ward. Cam Ward has been excellent in goal for the second straight night for Carolina. Well, he's looked good, hasn't he? Real good. And this is a kid who you know, was not supposed to step right in. 21-year-old rookie who had a great year last year for Lowell in the American League. But Martin Gerber acquired from Anaheim. He, op he opened a lot of eyes two years ago when he went to the Carolina training camp. And they thought at that time, boy, if this kid developed, again, two years ago, he was 19. And they said, if this kid keeps developing, he's going to be some kind of goaltender. Nice quick puck movement, and here comes Kavasha, powering towards the net. Holds it, threw it right across, Sopo fires! And that went off the arm of Ward. And pounded off the boards and right to Williams on right wing. Under two minutes to go in the third. Shots are 41 to 33, Carolina. Which is about what everybody had in mind when they changed the rules. Not a whole lot of goals, but that's because the goaltending has been terrific. Exciting game tonight here at the Coliseum. And the Islanders a minute and a half away from their first win as that puck deflects into the Islander bench. It's 3-1 to one New York. Well, Howie, you mentioned the goaltending. This game could have easily been 4 or 5 to nothing for Carolina in the first period. But that man right there, I mean, he held the fourth. I mean, he just, he kept his team in it. I mean, it just wasn't a couple of excellent saves. He had 9, 10 great saves in the first period from close in and rebound shots and he kept making those saves waiting for his team to get going and they got going in the second period and then played much better since the Hurricanes have pulled their goaltender so Ward to the bench extra skater the net is empty a centering feet all the way to the blue line Tverdovsky for Williams played it across and deflects all the way to the board watch Di Pietro here if he gets the puck with a two goal lead and an open net at the other end have a chance to gamble. Tverdovsky shot the flick and off the post, and it trickles in. It might have been Stahl who finally put it over the goal line as that shot came all the way through, and now the Hurricanes, with a minute one remaining, have pulled to within one. The Islander lead is three to two, and for the time being, that means they'll put their goaltender back in. I think it was Nordgren, 44 in the white, that made the initial deflection up high. This shot from Tverdovsky, Right there, Nordgren redirected it, it goes off the post. And I think it was in before Stahl got there. I think, I think Nordgren's going to get credit for it. Let's see it again. He redirects it off the post. Yeah, see, I think it got in before Stahl yep. was able to get a stick on that. I agree with you, but right now the pressing issue, the last 50 seconds. Again, Ward, the goaltender, heads to the bench. The Carolina net is empty. Cullen draped behind the net by Zitnik. J. 
Zitnik unable to gain control. Zygomanis turns it back in deep. Colored centers. Big save by Di Pietro. Maybe his best of the night on stall from right out in front. 32 seconds left. Islanders trying to hang on here. Zygomanis working along the boards. Takes it wide. Now gives it to Stahl. Good play there by Sean Bates. But it's taken back by Stahl. Put it in front. Backhanded out of the zone by Paris. All the way down, but wide of the net. And that'll be an icing with 11.3 seconds remaining in the third period. And the problem, the Islanders can't make a player change. The players that are out there are tired. I mean, they're all kind of bending over. Kavasha standing up a little bit, bending over, trying to catch their breath. And, and, a, and a good timeout right here by Steve Sterling. An excellent timeout. Now, he can't change his players, but he gives the ones that are on the ice a break with 11.3 seconds to go. And the faceoff will be to the left of Rick DiPietro. I mean, look at Bates, Gavasha. They're all kind of trying to get their second wind as they get ready. But what a save by DiPietro. Wow. Well, Eric Stahl is given credit for the second Carolina goal. I thought, along with you, Joe, that that puck actually was over the line before Stahl finished the job. However, they give it to Stahl, and he might have had another one, if not for the work of Di Pietro. Oh, there it is there. That, that's the shot by Stahl. The feet from behind the net. And Di Pietro, so quick, is able to make the save. You know, you think about what's on the line here for the last 11.3 seconds. It's big points because this is a conference opponent, Carolina. The Islanders just 11.3 seconds away if they could hold on from taking two. And Carolina trying to guarantee themselves one. Zygamanis and Bates draw. Sits at the circle. Stall tied up by Kavasha. That allows Bates to come clear with it. Down to five. Williams has to move it quickly, but Shipnick took him down. And the Islanders have won their home opener. I'm very surprised that Rod Brindamore didn't take the face off. He had the youngster, Zygamanis, a right-handed shot, try and draw it towards the boards, and Bates didn't win it, but he didn't lose it. They tied, and all that little delay there allowed the players to come in and eventually get the puck, throw it behind the net, and end it. And that man right there, Di Pietro, should be jumping for joy. Here it is again, Zygamanis. Now, he didn't lose it. Nobody really won the faceoff. And as that is going on, time is ticking down on the clock. And by the time Zitnik makes this play, that's it. It's over. What a night for Di Pietro. The Islanders were really struggling in the first period. And again, that sometimes happens in your home opener after you've had a couple of days off coming off a tough loss and a team that comes in that had played last night. The Islanders just couldn't get anything going in that first period. Didn't have their legs, didn't look very quick. But they sure found it in the second period. What a terrifically entertaining game. And you'd have to say the same about the Buffalo game, too. As tonight, there were 79 total shots. And the goaltender, the star of the show for the Islanders, here are the three stars. Number three, Brent Sopel. Brent Sopel had a good, solid game for the Islanders. The second star the assist. of the New York Islanders. Number John Bates played well all night. Short-handed goal, killed penalties. Played a physical game tonight to Sean Bates. And the star of the show. The I mean, just, he, the this kid is something. I'll tell you what. He was something in the first period. I mean, the whole game, but the first period, he gave his team a chance to win. <laughs> and you got to love him. I mean, he's just, he's, I mean, he's just, he's so enthusiastic all the time. If only he enjoyed himself a little bit, you know? Yeah. Ah, Di Pietro is just fabulous from start to finish tonight. 42 saves, tying the second highest number he's had in an NHL game. And with all of that, he earns a conversation with Deb Kaufman downstairs. Deb? Okay, so what was more difficult? All the saves in the first period to keep your team in it or this final flurry at the end? Well, I mean, the first period was a, was a good uh, was a good challenge, but I think that last flurry kind of made everybody a little bit nervous and uh, uptight. I mean, that team works really hard, and you got to give them a lot of credit. But, uh, you know, I think we learned something tonight. I mean, we came out in the third period in, uh, in our building, and and uh, do what we needed to do to win. What did you think you learned about yourselves? Well, I think we're a young team, and I think any time you can go into the third period tied and come out winning is a big step. I mean, Batesy played great, our PK did great, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get some momentum from this and uh, carry that into Saturday, uh, Monday. 
It's only the third time in your career you've been asked to make 40 plus saves, but the way the rules are now and the way this game is shaping up, is this something you're going to see a lot more of? Well, I'm sure there's going to be more and more shots. I mean, I watched some of the games last night and, uh, you know, 30, 35 shots is, is the average now. So it's something that as a goaltender you kind of embrace. You like the action, but, uh, you know, as long as it's in a winning effort. All right. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks, Steph. All right. Ricky gets his first win of the season. Plenty of action in this one. A quick break, and we are... Continuing on the home opener, Islanders win three to one. Back to the Coliseum as Ricky heads to the dressing room. Three to two final. Back after this. Hi, do you have a table? For Nothing for two hours, which is unacceptable. Let me see what I can do. What can I get for you? Hurry, please. This is our finest table. Tony, most people brought to you by smooth and refreshing Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Islanders win their first of the year in the home opener, beating Carolina 3-2. And the goal of the game is brought to you by smooth and refreshing Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. Well, it was a 2-1 to one game, on and Carolina was on the power play. Good play by Kavasha to knock the puck away from Stillman, and then here comes Bates. He's looking to pass, looking to pass, wait, wait, lots of patience, and then the great wrist shot to score the Islanders' first shorthanded goal of the year, and that put things away as the Islanders turned out to be the winning goal, and the Islanders went on to win at 3-2, but it was, uh, it, it was a tremendous goal at the time. It was a good effort by Kavasha, and I just like the way the Islanders kind of found themselves. I mean, the first period, they didn't look like the team that was put together uh, by Mike Milbury because you knew they could skate, you knew they had some offense, and it wasn't there in the first period, but they, they got regenerated in the second period. And yet with Rick DiPietro, they actually won the game in the first period as much as they did in the second and third. Yeah, I agree with you. I yeah. mean, he saved the game for him. I mean, that game could have easily been 4, 5, 6, nothing, and he just kept on making save after save. And in fact, at the end of that period, there was still a little time left on the clock. I saw him throw the puck to the corner on a, on a whistle and start kind of chirping a little bit to his players to get them going a little bit so they came out with a lot of fire in the second one thing also that I noticed about Di Pietro and this goes back to his earliest days with the Islanders they've talked so much about trying to economize his movements it seems like there are a lot less moves needed to make saves now than there were earlier on for him you I agree th yeah yeah I do in fact I think he's so much more comfortable with his surroundings and where he is on the ice and and who knows maybe this new rule with the trapezoid might have helped him a little bit because you know he wasn't uh, wasn't afraid to go to the corners <laughs> and and make some plays from the corners he can't can't do that now and so he's he's uh, very comfortable and very much in control of his game so an outstanding effort by Rick DiPietro tonight but he had help some of it came from Sean Bates who's going to talk about it downstairs with Deb Kaufman well if Miro Shatan gave the Islanders the first lead of the season I thought Sean Bates gave them their first exhale when you got you know sort of that cushion and that extra goal how important was that oh very important after um, after the first 20 we <laughs> we didn't look too good and then came out in the uh, in a second and played a good period and then this period here um, you know, we played hard and showed what, you know, what kind of team we are. Uh, getting that goal is that, uh, obviously a big lift for us, yeah. Now, what happened the first 20 minutes? It was the home opener, but you'd been off for a couple of days. I, I, you know what? I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to address that uh, tomorrow at practice. Um, you know, it could have been nerves. It could have been jitters. I don't know. Um, but uh, we came out with the last 40 and played well. All right. So take us through the goal on the power play. Kavasha made a nice play to chip the puck loose. Yeah, do we get it going here? Yeah, we'll look at it. Do you remember? He, he yeah, I just seen he poked the puck in, and I, you know, I just seen that we had a two on one, and Oleg was going to the net. The defense from the net slid right across here. Well, well, you yeah. showed tremendous patience, really. You waited for Tevardoski to fall. Well, you know what? One thing, I was out of gas there, and I, <laughs> I, I was just waiting for Oleg to, to draw someone over there, and lucky enough, he went down and gave me an opportunity to shoot the puck on net. So a great shot. Now, talk about being a little gassed. It, the way that these games have been played, did you expect that they would be this wide open and this up-tempo when they changed the rules? Well, we, we expected that. Um, it, you know, it's, it's tough for guys that are on the power play and penalty kill and guys who are sitting on the bench because you can go seven, eight, maybe nine minutes of not playing and then try to go out and kill a penalty for three or four minutes. So it, it, it's a tough thing that we have to get adjusted to. How important was this win, in, in, you know, considering that you lost the opener in Buffalo, to get finally just get going? Well, it, 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 it's a good win for us. Uh, obviously, we uh, we struggled in Buffalo, and to come uh, to come home in front of our fans and, and get a win is uh, is great. All right, Sean Bates with a specialty scoring shorthanded, and the Islanders get a 3-2 win as we go back upstairs.
All right, Deb, thanks. So the Islander is a winner, and uh, they'll look forward to Florida coming in here on Monday. And, and we've got some business we didn't finish, too, if I remember right. You do. Well, <laughs> sure, <laughs> dump it on my shoulders. But we did throw out a Nissan trivia question quite a while ago. And uh, since we haven't answered it correctly, we assume you all know what the answer is now that you've had all of this extra time to work with. But before Chris Campoli, the last Islander to score in his NHL debut, Kenny Janssen's brother, Jorgen Janssen, who did it in October of 19. 99. Long time ago, and now no, not only is uh, Kenny Jorgen not here, but neither is Kenny. No, well, you know, Jorgen just stayed here for the one year. He was a good hockey player. He's had a, a tremendous uh, international career, but just uh, would rather have lived in Sweden. His wife wasn't comfortable here, but he was a good player. And the Islanders needing to make some changes over the offseason. One in response to the fact that Kenny didn't come back. Uh, made lots of changes on defense, and Brent Sopel, one of the guys they brought in, one of the stars of the show tonight as the Islanders defeat the Carolina Hurricanes on a night when even Sparky had a little extra jump early on. Eric Stahl would put Carolina on top. You didn't like that, Joe? Eric Stahl would put Carolina on top early, and then the Islanders buzzed and buzzed and finally broke through, and uh, so they wind up winning this one 3-2 to two with Florida coming in here on Monday. Geico Islanders game night. Don't forget that Alexi Yashin feature at 12.30, and uh, drop of the puck a little after 1 o'clock. Coming up next here on FSN Thoroughbred Action from Belmont. Our thanks to our entire crew for Joe Micheletti and the crew. I'm Howie Rose wishing you a pleasant good night from the Coliseum.